Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you're at in the world. Welcome to Last Rounds Baseball's live commentary of the DuPont Professional Baseball League. It is going to be game three of the season and game three for us, as it will be the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks taking on the Oryx Buffaloes at the Kyocero Dome in Osaka. This is the third game of the series that we have looked at. And it'll be the final game of the set as tomorrow will be a day off. Well, first of all, I'll give you the starting lineups for Fukuoka. This is game three. It's the rubber match game as each team has won one game. In the opener, the Hawks knocked off the Buffaloes 3-1. to one. And last night, another well-pitched ball game. It was a 2-0 victory for the Buffaloes. The big blast off the bat of Leandro Cedeno in the fifth inning, bringing home both the runs of the Buffaloes. First of all, the starting lineup for Fukuoka, leading off in center field wearing number 23, is Yukio Shudo. Batting second to shortstop is number six, Kenta Imamiya. Hitting third and right field wearing number nine is Yuki Yanagida. And the cleanup spot and playing first base is number 25, Hataka Yamakawa. Batting fifth and left field is number three, Kensuke Kondo. Hitting sixth to third base is number 24, Ryoya Kurihara. Batting in the seventh spot and doing the designated hitting is number 28, Adam Walker. Batting eighth at second base is number eight, Taisi Makihara. And batting ninth, the catcher, wearing number 62 tonight, is Takashi Umino. And they are going to be facing the left-hander Daiki Tajima as he'll be making his first start of the 2024 campaign. And now the starting lineup for the Oryx Buffaloes. Leading off at second base tonight is Ryo Oda. He wears number 31. Hitting second in center field is number zero, Ryo Watanabe. Hitting third in left field is number seven, Ryoma Nishikawa. And the cleanup spot and doing the designated hitting is number 40, Leandro Cedeno. Batting fifth and doing the catching is number four, Tomoya Mori. Batting in the sixth spot is the first baseman, number 44, Yuma Tongu. Hitting seventh at third base is number six, Yuma Mune. Batting eighth and right field is number 99, Yataro Sugimoto. And batting ninth is Katara Kirbyashi, who wears number 24 and will play shortstop. And they are going to be facing the American right-hander, Carter Stewart Jr., who will be taking to the bump for the Hawks tonight. Well, Tajima has completed his warm-up tosses, and we are ready to get this one underway as the lefty delivers the first pitch of the ballgame. It's a fastball swung on, grounded up the middle, fielded on the backhand side by the second baseman, Oda, and with one pitch, there is one away on a ground out 4-3 to three here in the first inning. And that is going to bring up the shortstop, Kenta Imamiya. For Imamiya, he is 1-6 for six in the early goings. He's got nothing across the slash line. Defensively tonight for the Buffaloes from left to right field, it is Nishikawa in left. The center fielder is Watanabe. The right fielder is Sugimoto. Around the horn from first to third, it is Tongo at first, Oda at second. With the shortstop, Kirby Ash in the third baseman, Mune, and the battery of Tajima and Mori. The first pitch was a fastball that missed upstairs to Imamiya. One ball and no strikes to him. The lefty working out of a set position delivers a fastball that just misses down, and the count goes to 2-0. and So two balls and no strikes. I have to say that the manager at Nakajima is in a very similar spot to last year. We have not seen the same lineup two nights in a row. Lots of changes, whereas on the other side of the coin, as there's a fastball taken for a called strike, the count goes to 2-1 and one on Imamiya. The Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks have had very few changes in their lineup. Only tonight, Takuya Kai is out, and Takashi Umino getting the start behind the plate. But keep your eyes peeled if the game is close or if the Hawks are in the lead. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Kai later in the game. There's a breaking ball that misses up and away. Count now goes to 3-1 and one on Imamiya. And Mamiya hit a triple in his first at bat in the first game of the series, and he came home to score the run for the Hawks in that one, or at least to get the scoring going for the Hawks. As the lefty kicks and delivers, it's a fastball swung on. This ball is lined in the left center field, racing over and making the catch is Nishikawa. And that is going to retire Imamiya for the second out of the inning, so two up and two away here. And that's going to leave it up to the right fielder, Yuki Yanagita. For Yanagita, he's off to a strong start. He is two for five. He's got no homers and an RBI. Yanagita and Kondo were the main part of the engine last year, and now they've got Hotaka Yamakawa to join them. 
It's a very difficult part of the batting order. And with a healthy Ryoya Kurihara, hopefully he will be a part of that mix as well. Here's the first pitch to Yanagita. It's a breaking ball waved out and missed. And the count is 0-1. Tajima in the playoffs last year was cruising in the Japan series. And they made the pitching change to take him out. And they ended up blowing the lead and losing a ball game. There's a fastball that misses down, and the count now is one ball and one strike. And a Nakajima came under some scrutiny for that if they maybe had pulled out the lefty a little too soon. One ball and one strike to Yanagita. Two gone here in the first inning. Here comes the pitch from Tajima as he delivers a fastball swung on its tap slowly foul past the first base coach's box, and the count goes to one and two. So one ball and two strikes to Yuki Anagita. We haven't decided what we're going to do for our next games this week, but we will post something early in the week as we will be away for a couple of days in the early portion. So we'll have to pick up the call a little later in the week because that fastball misses down and the count goes to two and two. Tuesday and Wednesday will be out of town. So I'm able to get on to the calls of those games, but certainly Saturday and Sunday next week and maybe even Thursday and Friday in the docket as well. Fastball taken for a call, third strike. Yanagita stood there like the house by the side of the road. He doesn't like the call, but he goes down for out number three, and that will do it here for the Hawks in their half of the first inning. There was no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left the board. Or through a half inning, it is Fukuoka, no score, and the Buffaloes coming to bat. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back with the call in just a few minutes. Appreciate you guys here. Our friend, the living room in the house, says he took the over six and a half. And we'll say that the living room might be living in the outhouse based on those projections. We'll be back in just a few. back everybody carter stewart is on the hill getting tuned up here for this one as he will be facing the top of the order in rio oda rio oto watanabe and rioma nishikawa the three names that all start with the r at the beginning nine innings in exhibition play he had four innings and five innings in two different starts allowed himself three runs over those nine innings of work so we'll see how it projects here for the season he had recently, or in the offseason, signed an extension to Stewart Jr. It was, a I believe, a three-year extension. As the first pitch of the ball game from him is on the way, it's a breaking ball that misses upstairs for a ball, and the count is one and one to Oda. This is Oda's first at-bat of the 2024 campaign, and it looks like manager Nakajima is staying the form as he's had three different second basemen on three different games in the series. Fastball misses down, and the count now goes to 2-0. and So two balls and no strikes as the right-hander rocks and delivers. A fastball that is check swing fouled away. And the count runs to 2-1 and one on Oda. That pitch had a little arm side run, and it came in on the fists. We were talking the other day. We had somebody leave a message for us on one of our channels and said that the home run that Mike Trout hit was a cookie that was thrown down the middle. There's a split finger pitch swung on and missed. That was at 90 miles an hour, two and two to Oda. And they figured that they were in their fifties and probably could hit the same pitch. It was kind of laughable. Hitting 90 miles an hour is one thing. Hitting 90 miles an hour with arm side run, cut, tilt, 
All kinds of movement is a different kettle of fish. There's a breaking ball swung on, grounded to short, fielded by Emma Mia across the diamond. And that is going to get Oda on a ground out 6-3 to three for the first out of the inning. One gone, and that's going to bring up the center fielder, Rio Watanabe. Defensively tonight for the Hawks, from left to right field, it is Kondo in left, Shudo in center, Yanagita in right. Around the horn from first to third, Yamakawa is at first. The second baseman is Makihara. Mamiya is at short, Kurihara at third with the battery of Carter Stewart Jr. and Takashi Amino. And the first pitch to Watanabe is swung on. It is lifted into shallow left field. Coming hard is Kondo. He slides and he makes the catch. And with one pitch there, Watanabe is retired for the second out of the inning. Nice play by the left fielder, Kondo. And that's going to leave it all up to the left fielder, Ryoma Nishikawa. And for Nishikawa, he has started the year one for seven. He's had some defensive plays that have been very good. In the first inning, he made a nice one going into the left center field gap, getting on his horse to get a ball. And here is the first pitch to Nishikawa. It is a fastball taken for a called strike, and the count is 0-1. Nishikawa batting from the left side, wearing the number 7 that was sported by Masataka Yoshida a couple of years ago. That fastball misses down, and the count goes to 1-1. One and one. One ball and one strike it is to the left-handed hitting Nishikawa. Stewart Jr. rocks into the windup and he kicks and fires. Fastball swung on its pop foul right behind home plate. The count goes now to one and two. Nishikawa's only hit of the series came in the first game as it was a excuse me swing that was chopped through the left side of the infield. It was almost a self-defense swing by the Oryx left fielder. Fastball misses inside. The count now goes to two and two. But when Nishikawa can get it going, he'll be able to start to carry the way here for his group. That last pitch was at 99 miles an hour that backed Nishikawa off the plate. That's by far the fastest pitch we've seen from Stewart all day. There is a breaking ball swung on. This ball is looped into left field, and this ball is going to get down for a base hit this time as Kondo is going to play it off the hop. So Nishikawa picks up his second hit of the series. So he is aboard at first base, and that's going to bring up the designated hitter, Leandro Cedeno. And one thing's for certain, you don't want to face Cedeno with runners on. He hit the two-run homer to the opposite field gap last night. Very familiar swing from Nishikawa. They showed the replay of it. It looked very similar to the swing that he had the other night. Did a great job of keeping his hands inside the ball to fight it off, and this time he had lifted it over the head of the shortstop in the shallow left field where Kondo had to play it. First pitch from Stewart is a fastball that misses upstairs to Cedeno. The count is 1-0. and Cedeno was the only offense required last night. As we said, he went opposite field for his blast. His first home run of the year. He is 2-4 for four on the season. Big fellow waiting on the offering. There is a pitch at 97 miles an hour taken for a called strike, and the count runs even at one and one. It's very interesting to watch Carter Stewart. He has the ability to really dial it up when he needs to. I haven't really zoned in on some of the pitches that he's been throwing here tonight, if it's been more two-seamers earlier on and now going to his four-seamer. He's only thrown 13 pitches, but Three pitches now have been in the upper 90s. He's starting to get the feel out there on the mound. Here comes the 1-1 offering now to Cedeno as he works to the set position and fires. Fastball swung on and missed. Again, another pitch at 97 miles an hour, and the count goes now to 1-2. and two. Last season, when I watched Stewart Jr., he kind of reminded me of Jacob Turner, who was a first-round pick of the Detroit Tigers a number of years ago. Turner was then flipped to the Marlins, and he had had some time around and about Major League Baseball. There's a fastball swung on and missed. And that's going to retire Sedaniel. I'll save my thoughts on Jacob Turner and my comparison to Carter Stewart Jr. when we return in a bit. But he is gone as Sedaniel on strikes for out number three. No runs in the inning. There was a hit. Nobody 
no errors and one runner left the board. We are now through one complete. Our score is the Hawks nothing and the Buffaloes nothing. Stick around. We'll be back with the call at the top of the second inning when we return after this. Welcome back, everybody. It is going to be the heart of the batting order to come to bat here for the Hawks in their half of the second inning. It'll be Hataka Yamakawa, Kensuke Kondo, and Ryoya Kurihara to face the left-hander Daiki Tajima on for inning number two of work. Last half inning, I was talking about Carter Stewart in my comparison to Jacob Turner. What I mean by that is Turner had a lot of high-end stuff. He was a first-round pick. One of his issues was was holding runners and then pitch efficiency, too many walks, but it looks like that Carter has been cleaning up his mechanics at this level, certainly compared to when he first broke in a few years ago. Here's the first pitch from the lefty to Jima. It's a fastball taken for a call and strike. The count is 0-1 to Yamakawa. Yamakawa, two for five on the season. He's got no homers. Check that he's got one homer and one RBI. And check that again. He is actually one for eight on the season. I was looking at the Yanagita stats. There's a fastball that misses up. So one for eight on the year with one homer and one RBI. We'll try that again. Big fella hit the home run on opening night. He was quiet last night as well. But when he gets going, he can carry the ball club. Here's the one one. Fastball misses down and the count now goes to two and one. So I was saying that comparison of Carter Stewart Jr. to Turner. Also, the walk rate. If he's got to cut down the walk rate, he's also got to make sure that he can improve his first pitch strike efficiency as well as going a little deeper into ball games. Looked like he was running out of steam in the fourth and fifth inning last year. Fastball is down and the count goes to three and one. But he's got an opportunity to be in the rotation right from the get-go this year and He's going to have to be a horse for the Fukuoka Ball Club. Here comes the 3-1. As the lefty holds set and now delivers. Fastball swung on and fouled away, and the count now goes to 3-2 and two on Yamakawa. This would be a great opportunity to be able to pull the string. I'm not sure if Tajima relies or would rely in this situation to throw a 3-2 changeup. We'll see what he's got in his arsenal here for the right-handed hitting Yamakawa. Here comes the 3-2 pitch as the lefty works set. Now delivers. Fastball swung on, grounded foul just past the third base coach's box. And we're going to do this all over again. There's only one other game going on right now in the NPB. And that is the game between the Tohoku Rakuten Golden Eagles and the Saitama Cebu Lions. That is also the only one underway. It's in the bottom of the first inning. The score there is locked up at zeros. Eagles looking for their first one of the year. Lions off to a surprisingly 2-0 start. Fastball swung on, lifted foul. Going to reach the seats on the first base side. Count remains 3-2 and two to Yamakawa. So three balls and two strikes as Tajima gets himself a new ball, ready to go again as he works himself to the set. Nobody on here, but pitching from the set position. Here comes the offering. He kicks and fires, and there is a breaking ball that misses way upstairs, and Yamakawa is going to be aboard with a leadoff walk here to begin the second inning. 
That's going to bring up the left fielder, Kensky Kondo. Well, for Kondo, he's off to a great start. He is four, four for six to begin the year. He's got nothing across the slash line. Both of these first two games, there hasn't been a lot of traffic on base. Last night's game just finished in just over two hours. Really, the amount of traffic was all in that one inning when Sedanio hit the home run to give the Buffaloes that 2 nothing lead in the fifth inning and not much else after that. And here comes the first offering to the lefty Kondo, and it's a fastball that misses outside for ball one, counts 1-0. One oh. One ball and no strikes. Kondo, a very important piece to this batting order. Basically, the Hawks, I hate to say they got him for nothing, but very impactful player came over in the trade a couple of years ago. There's a breaking ball that misses down and away, and the count goes to 2-0 and oh on Kondo. We got our friend Jackson in the house. He says day two checking in. Thanks for popping in with us. We appreciate you being here. We got the Crimson Shadow in the house. Thanks for stopping in. Glad you could make it in. And hopefully you have brought the adult beverages with you tonight. And he says he's going to see how long you can stay awake. Well, I might be able to put you to sleep as there's a fastball taken for a called strike, and the count is two and one. If this game isn't very interesting. You have that ability to do that too. So two balls and one strike to Kondo. Runner at first, Yamakawa. Nobody gone here in the second inning. Scores all locked up at zeros. Tajima works to the set position. He checks the runner at first. And now here comes the 2-1. Fastball swung on and missed. Count goes to 2-2 two two on Kondo. Certainly both Kondo and Yamakawa, who is on base, are double play candidates when they come to the plate. Yamakawa last night grounded into a pair of them. Kondo here is not exactly the most fleet of foot. He's decent, but he's definitely a candidate to roll into one. Still two balls and two strikes. Tajima stepped off the backside of the rubber to go to the rosin bag and rub his hands up. So we're going to go with the 2-2 count here to Kondo again. Yamakawa gets his lead over at first base, pitches on the way, fastball swung on his lifted foul. It's going to reach the seats over on the third base side. The count remains at 2-2. Two and two. So two balls and two strikes. We did put up our picks again today. On, the, on our channel, so if you happen to be looking in or you're wanting to see if you're into that sort of stuff, we gave you our picks. Who we think are going to pull off victories today. We're off to a pretty good start. 8-3 and three or 8-3-1 three and one if you include the tie last night. We'll call those ones a push. We're not in the business of picking ties. Fastball swung on, lifted foul into the seats. Count remains at 2-2. Two and two. A friend of the living room was taking pot shots at us earlier in the chat saying that rather than us picking $1.40 favorites that we're calling wins, of course we're calling them wins. If you go back and you take a look at the results over the last few days, there are a lot of the teams that were the favorites did not come up a winning. We'll talk about that in a minute as well. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Fastball that misses inside. So if you look at Odds Portal, Odds Portal is the one of the ones that gives the odds on NPB. And the favorites who actually won just in straight up on Odds Portal, and we'll get that for you in a moment here, is Tajima has the count full here to Kondo. Three balls and two strikes. Lefty works himself set at the belt. Here comes the pitch. Now oh, he kicks and delivers. Fastball swung on and fouled off right into the catcher. Oh, boy. Tamoya Mori there is wincing a little bit. A little bit of pain, and that's going to keep the count at three balls and two strikes. If we actually look at the favorites that have ended up 
pulling off a victory in the games over the last couple of nights. So it would be basically down to 11 games because one game ended at four games out of the 11 were won by the underdog. So there's no such thing as an automatic victory in these situations. Three balls and two strikes it is. There is a fastball swung on it. It's popped up over on the first base side. Moving over underneath it is Morris. There he's going to make the catch, and Kondo is going to be retired. And that will bring it now to, he's gone for the second out of the inning, or check that, the first out of the inning, and that's going to bring up Ryoya Kurihara. Our friend living room says, take Tasmania tonight in basketball. And beyond basketball, that would be the game that will go on probably after us. I think it's 11.30 Pacific start. Probably tune in to watch the ending or the climax of that one a little bit later. Here comes the offering here to Kurihara. There's a fastball that's taken for a call strike, and the count is 0-1. Our friend Crimson Shadow says he was watching his Tigers play. Kenta Maeda looked rough, giving up three home runs. Yeah, well, the good thing you're playing the White Sox on a day like today because the White Sox are pretty rough as well. But the Tigers, that bullpen looks pretty darn good. Same like it was last year. Fastball ticket for a called strike, and the count is 0-2. So once Maeda left the ball game, it was all bullpen. And the Tiger bats were able to do enough to get the boom going, and they got rid of the hockey stick. They've gone with the pizzas, pizza slices in the dugout this year. So that is their celebration tool. So maybe that's going to change the karma a bit. Here comes the 0-2 pitch to Curry Harup. As Tajima holds set, kicks and fires. Fastball misses outside. The count goes to one and two. So one ball and two strikes it is. Pizza, pizza, and it's hot and ready. That's for sure. As they are... Tigers off to a 2 0 start in the Motor City. Here comes the 1 2 pitch as the lefty kicks and fires. Fastball swung on it is going to be lifted foul into the seats over on the third base side. Count remains at 1 and 2. So one ball and a two strikes. Lefty again, ready to go again. Here comes the one-two offering from Tajima. As he kicks and fires, it is a breaking ball swung on. This ball is lifted into straightaway center field. Coming in underneath it is the center fielder Watanabe, and he's going to make the catch. That's going to put Curry Har away for the second out of the inning. That's going to leave it all up to Adam Walker. It's been a tough start. For Walker, he's one for seven. He, his only base hit was a single that was a chopper over the head of the pitcher. So one for seven on the season for Walker. It was a two for two trade. I can't remember the other player who, off the top of my head who came over in the trade, but I know Ray Takahashi, who was getting the start for the Giants tonight, was one of the other players who went the other way. So be curious to see how the sidewinder is going to do as a starter in the Giants rotation. Fastball misses down. The count is 1-0. Takahashi had a serious problem of walking a lot of batters, but he was difficult to hit. A couple of years ago, we saw him a few times, and he was basically unhittable, but at the same time, he's just walked too many batters. Here's the pitch. It is a fastball swung on and missed. The count goes to 1-1 one and one on Walker. I just don't think Takahashi in today's Major League Baseball would have a chance to play. I don't think, I can't remember the last time we've seen a sidearm starter other than maybe an opener for one or two innings. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Fastball misses inside and the count now goes to 2-1. and one. So two balls and one strike it is.
Lefty Tajima holds himself at the belt. He checks the runner Yamakawa at first. Here's the 2-1. Breaking ball swung on, popped up on the infield on the left side. Coming in is Kirby Ashi. He's got room and makes the catch over by the pitcher's mound. And that is going to do it as Walker is retired on the pop-up to the shortstop. Well, they got the leadoff batter on on a walk to Yamakawa. And then it was three straight balls in the air that do the Hawks in. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left the board. We're now moving to the bottom of the second inning. Your score is the Hawks nothing, the Buffaloes nothing. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back with the call at the bottom of the second inning when we return after this. We appreciate you for stopping in. And our friend Living Room says, Happy Easter and all that other stuff as well. We'll leave that to you to read if you so choose. We'll be right back in just a few. Hang tight, everybody. Appreciate you guys for jumping in here with us tonight. Welcome back, everybody. We are moving to the bottom half of the second inning. It'll be Tomoya Mori, Yuma Tongu, and Yuma Mune to come to bat here to face the right-hander Carter Stewart as he will begin his second inning of work. Mori batting from the left side here, stepping in. He is one for six on the early going. The left-handed hitting catcher. Does not get cheated with his cuts. Here comes the first pitch from Stewart Jr. And it is a fastball at 96 miles an hour that just misses upstairs. The count is 1-0. and So one ball and no strikes. There is a breaking ball swung on it. It is popped up into right field. Camping out underneath it with plenty of room is Yanagita. And he is there to make the catch. And Mori is retired. One up and one away, and that'll bring up the first baseman, Yuma Tongu. For Tongu on the early going, he is one for five. He's got nothing across the slash line this year as he strides to the plate. Our friend Crimson Shadow says, I do love the Tigers pitching rotation. The only question is the batting core. Can they stay top 15? I think that's a bit of a problem. We're about to find out here as there's a breaking ball that misses upstairs. Our friend Baseball Lover, 1984, checking in from Plainfield, New Jersey. Appreciate you being in here, Baseball Lover. Thanks for joining us. There's a breaking ball. Wave that and miss. The count goes to one and one on Tongu. Tongu was hit by a pitch the other night. We were in the process of telling everybody that he got Drilled in the back of a head in the game last year against the Tohoku Racket and Golden Eagles. And then it was like, when he came back, he was absolutely on fire. There's a split finger pitch that is swung on and missed. And the count goes to one and two on Tongu. Carter Stewart Jr. Looking much more polished already this year. A little bit more relaxed. Another year of experience under the belt for the right-hander. Here's the pitch. Fastball swung on, grounded softly to short. Fielded by Imamiya, he throws to first, and it's a ground out 6-3. to three. That's going to retire Tongu for the second out of the inning. So two Buffaloes up and two Buffaloes down, and that's going to bring up the third baseman, Yuma Mune. From the living room came in, and he said he took a over, I think, in this game. I'm not so sure that I'd be dipping my toe into overs here. That is for sure. 
It's been a low scoring affair. The first game ended three to one for the Hawks. The second game last night was two nothing in favor of the Buffaloes. In this game here, we expect that it'll be another one of those close affairs, low scoring affairs. First pitch fastball delivered to Mune that misses upstairs. That pitch was at 97 miles an hour. Baseball lovers said, what do you think about Yamamoto getting rocked in Korea? Well, tonight he went five innings and only allowed two hits. So is he back on song? Probably. There's a breaking ball taken for a strike. I know I heard some of the reports out of there, and they were saying that there was a couple of things they were trying to point, maybe give some blame as to maybe why he didn't do so well. There's a breaking ball swung on. This is lifted into left field. Moving over underneath it is Kondo. He's there to make the catch. And that was a 1-2-3 inning as the Buffaloes go quietly here in the second. I'll come back in just a couple moments and give you my thoughts on Yamamoto and his rebound start tonight in North America. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left the board. We are now through to complete your scores. The Hawks, nothing, and the Buffaloes, nothing. Stick around. Everybody will be back with the call in just a few. Appreciate you all for checking in with us tonight. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everybody. We got the eight, nine, and one hitters to come to bat here for Fukuoka in the top half of the third inning. Yet another healthy crowd at the Kyocera Dome tonight between these two ball clubs. Our friend baseball lover, 1984. Good year to be a baseball lover. That was the year the Tigers won the World Series, knocking off the San Diego Padres. Yamamoto, a couple of the reasons they said is maybe he's got to get used to the ball. The ball is a little bit bigger in Major League Baseball. The seams are a little bit lower. you got to get used to being able to deliver that split finger pitch, which is going to be a little bit of a difference as the first pitch is delivered to Makihara, taken outside for a ball. Makihara, one for seven on the season. Nothing on the slash line for him as the 1-0 is on the way. There's a fastball that misses down, and the count now goes to 2-0. So two balls and no strikes. Anyways, but back to Yamamoto, I think that, you know, that was a sign last year too that he would get roughed up in innings. Fastball, take it for a called strike. The count goes to two and one. He'd be cruising along for four innings, almost unhittable. And then all of a sudden the wheels would fall off the apple cart a little bit in the, say, a fifth inning. And then he would get back in the groove and carry on like nothing had happened. So I think you're going to see some of that this year with him in Los Angeles as that fastball swung on and fouled away, and the count goes to two and two. Crimson Shadow says it's a, nuts how different it is. Yeah, baseballs are, are different, even manufactured balls across the country. I mean, I remember as a young guy playing Connie Mack ball that we used to use a ball called Diamond. Diamond was bought out or has been renamed as Pro 9, and they used to have high seams on the ball. And you could make the ball really dance as there's a fastball swung on, grounded back to Tajima. Throws to first, and that's going to retire Makihara on a ground out one to three. He's in the books for out number one. It's going to bring up the catcher, Takashi Umino. 
And so the higher the seams, the more break you can get on your breaking ball, the more things you can do with the pitch, the more run you can get on your fastballs. Major League Baseball was about seven or eight years ago that they lowered the seams on the Major League balls. Now you really got to spin it to get that ball to bite. There's a breaking ball that misses outside to Amino, and the count is 1-0. Amino making his first start as Takuya Kai is pretty much the everyday catcher. But he is getting the nod here on this Sunday afternoon in Japan. Fastball misses outside. The count goes to 2-0. and And then the other complaint about the Major League Balls is they put some, there's, it's their pre-tacked, I think they call it. So it's a little bit different than the other stuff. There's a fastball swung on its rip foul into the netting down the left field line, and the count now goes to two and one. When there's tacking on the baseball or tack on the baseball, it just makes it a little bit more difficult in which to grip. So two balls and one strike it is as the Lefty delivers. There's a breaking ball that is waved at and missed. The count now goes to two and two on Amino. The, some people like the pre-grip or the pre-tack on the ball. Some people don't. You get to use the rosin bag. Some pitchers like using the rosin bag or go to it. Some don't. Just changes the feel of how the ball is coming out of your hands. When you get the rosin bag, some guys really like it. So there's a breaking ball down, and the count goes to three and two on the catcher. The Buffaloes are 0 1 0 across their slash line. The Hawks are 0 0 0. The only hit so far in the ball game was off the bat of the Buffaloes left fielder Ryoma Nishikawa back in the first inning. And there's the pitch. It's a fastball swung on and fouled away down the right field line, and the count remains at three and two. Of the nine hitters tonight faced by Tajima, he's gone full to three of them. That includes the batter Umino right now. So here comes the 3 2 offering as the lefty holds to the set, now kicks and fires. Fastball swung on and missed. Umino chased after that one. It looked like it was going to be ball four, but he goes in the books for the second out of the inning. And that is going to bring up the top of the order in Yukio Shudo. Our friend, the baseball lover, says the Mississippi mud that's rubbed on the MLB balls are from my home state of New Jersey. I've actually got a little bit, a bit of that in my cupboard. Can't remember the gal's name that they, but it's the Mississippi mud. And the reason originally for that, there's a ball that's fastball swung on. It's bunted down the third baseline. They're going to have to hurry to get Shudo, but he's going to get aboard on a infield bunt single. And that is going to be his first hit of the year. He's got himself aboard as with a single, and that's going to bring up the shortstop, Kenta Emamiya. Originally, the whole purpose of rubbing up the baseballs before the game was to get the gloss off the ball. I don't know how many today they actually have to rub up, as the life expectancy of a baseball is not very long anymore in a major league game. When you think that there's probably between the two teams somewhere around 250 pitches a ball game. Probably use close to a couple hundred baseballs, we would think now. All the balls that are fouled away or put in play and never to be seen again. Yeah, as they throw over to first base and getting back in time is Shudo. I wouldn't bat an eye to see Shudo take off here. One would have to think that he's going to try to get himself into scoring position and you take your chances with Imamiya to try to bang him home. If not, you got Imamiya to lead off the next inning and almost serves as a pseudo leadoff hitter himself. And there goes Shudo. Here comes the throw down to second, and it's not going to be in time. That's going to be the second stolen base of the season for Shudo. I didn't get to see if that last pitch was a ball or a strike or if the hitter had taken a cut through on it. We'll look again. Looked like the pitch was down in the dirt. 
Shudo got that one easily. Two stolen bases now on the year for him. He has not been caught yet. So Shudo now the runner at second. It was a strike ruled to Emamiya. No balls and one strike. Let's see if he decides to take off again. So here comes the lefty as he holds set, kicks and delivers. Fastball swung on and fouled away, and the count now is 0-2 to Emamiya. We had quite the festive crowd in here last night. It was a late-arriving crowd, mind you, but a festive crowd nonetheless. Our friend in the living room would know if there was a UFC fight going on tonight. We don't really keep up on that. That usually impacts the folks that come into the ballgame here, especially if there is a fight going on, and typically Saturday night is fight night. So here's the 0-2 pitch to Emamiya. As Tajima delivers, fastball swung on. Line to the shortstop, Kirby Ashi, who slides to both his knees to make the catch. And that is going to do it. Emamiya hit the ball on the screws, but right to the glove of his opposite number, the shortstop of the Buffaloes. No runs in the inning. There was the hit. That was the bunt single buff, the bat of Shudo. No errors and one runner left aboard. You're now moving to the bottom of the third inning. Your score is the Hawks nothing and the Buffaloes nothing. Stick around, everybody. Who will be the first team to blink and to possibly give up a run here tonight? We'll be back in just a few right after this. Hang tight. Appreciate you hanging with us. Welcome back, everybody. We are moving to the bottom half of the third inning. It'll be the eight, nine, and one hitters to come to bat here. It'll be Sugimoto, Kirbyashi, and the top of the order, Rio Ota. Our front living room says might get a crowd after the UFC card. Main event starts in 20. It says women's flyweight event. Our friend baseball lover says he wishes the MLB... Crowds could be more like the NPB ones. Unfortunately, it really started to happen about 25 to 30 years ago. There was a fastball swung on and fouled away, and the count is 0-1. And what I mean by that is just the electronic scoreboards, the entertainment, just took the crowds out of the game in North America. Really, really disappointing. As there's a fastball swung on, and it is lifted foul into the seats over on the first base side. The count now goes to 0-2 on Sugimoto. Only 24 pitches through the first four innings for Stewart Jr. Curious to see what his leash would be tonight. I would think somewhere between 80 and 100 pitches. But there used to be a time when you go to the MLB games, and people would clap and chant and cheer. Fastball swung on, grounded over to the right side. Fielded by Makihara, he throws to first, and Sugimoto is going to be retired on a ground out 4-3. to three. He's gone for out number one, and that will bring up the shortstop, Kataro Kirbyashi. For Kirbyashi, he is hunting for his first hit of the season. He's begun the year 0-7. for 7. Hits are at a premium here for these two ball clubs over the first two games. Great pitching has been... On the day, and as I've called before, I think this is a matchup that we are probably going to be looking at for the Climax Series in the Pacific League. Both of these teams deep in their positions. Probably the Buffaloes are deeper. 
as the first pitch is a breaking ball that's taken for a called strike, and the count is on one to Kataro Kirbyashi. But the pitching strength for both of these clubs is the difference from them and the rest of the league. There is a fastball swung on it. It is grounded foul just past the bag at third base. Count is now no balls and two strikes to Kirby Ashi. Kirby Ashi, the shortstop, batting in the nine hole tonight. And there is a breaking ball that is taken upstairs. The count goes to one and two. Our friend Baseball Lover says he's still hoping for his Marines. Roki Sasaki gets the start tonight for the Chiba Ball Club. So he will be the talk of the town tomorrow, I'm sure, as there's a breaking ball missing down to Kirby Ashi, and the count goes to two and two. I would think they're, well, based on our predictions, we think that they'll get the win tonight. Certainly the Hokkaido to Pond ham fighters in town, but they're not the fighters from a couple of years ago that were really painful to watch. Fastball misses outside. It's now three and two to Kirby Ashi. The fighters two years ago were tough to watch defensively, on the mound, offensively. Last year, they made some improvements. And this year here, they've got some reinforcements. They could be a danger to come in 2025. Breaking ball misses upstairs, and Stewart has lost Kirby Ashi. That's going to be ball four. He's aboard with a one-out walk, and that'll bring up the top of the order in Rio Oda. Not something that we had, didn't see last night. We did see the pitcher for the Buffalo struggle with the control. But for the most part in this series, there's not been a lot of walks. Both of these clubs, the credit to the pitching has been very good. And we would expect if it gets into the late innings, that's a one-run ball game, it can get closed off in a big hurry. We got a chance to see the other night the Hawks tipped their hat for the sixth or the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings with Matsumoto, Fuji, and Osuna. There's a breaking ball taken for a called strike, and the count is 0 1 to Rio Oda. Oda making his first start of the season tonight. He's 0 for 1, grounded to short his first time up. As we mentioned last year in the playoffs and in the postseason, the Buffaloes were a revolving door at second base. Oda, the third player to make that start in three nights. There's a fastball swung on. It's lifted into the seats over on the first base side. Count is 0-2. We saw Nishino on the first night, Gonzalez last night, and Oda tonight. Just want to know when we're going to see the rest of the revolving door. Where is Rio Adachi? Where is Oshiro? I think he also spent some time at second base last year. Here's the pitch. Fastball misses outside. They throw back down to first to try to get Kirby Ashi a little too far, but he slides back in safely. That's going to be one and two to Oda. So one ball and two strikes. Rio Watanabe or Ryoto Watanabe waits his turn on deck. Takuya Kai is. Not behind the plate tonight, so it was the catcher, Romino, being able to flash his arm. They throw over to first base, and diving back is Kirby Ashi. This might be an interesting spot for Kirby Ashi to be running. Maybe a strike him out, throw him out potential here. Try to get yourself into scoring position. Got to try to manufacture a run somehow here in the. Bottom half of the third inning, they throw over to first base again and diving back again is Kirby Ashi. Our friend Tudo in the house again. TYN is back in the house tonight too. We're glad you're here. TYN is a Hawk fan. He's been with us for the last three seasons when we've been calling these games and we're glad you're with us again here. So here comes the one-two pitch. The right-hander kicks and delivers. It is a breaking ball. Check swing foul over on the first base side. Now the count remains at one and two to Oda.
All the games pretty much across Major League Baseball are all but finals, and it looks like the game is now a final in Los Angeles as the Dodgers dropped one tonight to the Cardinals. Righty Stewart holds set, now delivers. Fastball swung on. This is lifted foul, reaching the seats over on the first base side. Count remains at one and two. They're taking a look across the Major League Baseball. There are 11 Japanese players in the MLB this year, or at least on the 40-mans. There's a fastball swung on. It's grounded over to short, fielded by Emamiya, over to second for one, back to first. That's going to be an inning-ending double play. We'll come back and talk about the Japanese players in MLB in just a few. That goes in the books as a 6-4-3 double play. Oda, the backside retiree. Kirbyashi, the lead runner, gone. We are now through three complete. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left the board. We are now after three. Your score is the Hawks no score and the Buffaloes no score. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back in just a few. Appreciate you guys for listening in here tonight. We'll be right back in just a couple moments. Welcome back, everybody. There are two other games underway. In the bottom of the first inning, the Swallows have a 1-0 lead over the Dragons at the Jinju. And the other game in the Pacific League, it is a 3-1 scoreline for the Lions over the Eagles. That is in the bottom of the third inning. That game is in Tohoku. The Lions are trying to complete the sweep of the Eagles on their home soil. So it's going to be the 3-4 and 5 hitters to come to bat for the Hawks. Yuki Yanagita, Hataka Yamakawa, and Kensuke Kondo. The first pitch is a fastball swung on and tap foul over on the first base side, and the count is quickly 0-1 to Yanagita. Yanagita is 0-1 tonight. He was called out on strikes looking back in the first inning. 2-6 for six on the early going. No homers and an RBI. Lefty Tajima kicks and delivers. Fastball misses down, and the count goes even to 1-1. Tajima was at 53 pitches through the first three innings. I would hazard a guess that if he can get through five and maybe even into the sixth, it would be a big deal for the Buffaloes. But I don't know at this pace, the way he's going, if he would sniff the seventh. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball, take it for a called strike, and the count now goes to one and two. Yanagita, not sure he shared the same sentiments as the home plate umpire with that call. Our friend Baseball Lover says he's trying to get the plushies of all NPB mascots to go with Mr. Met, his Mr. Met plush. There's the one-two pitch, and it is a breaking ball down, and the count is now two and two to Yanagita. Just want to know if that Mr. Met plushie that you have has a cigarette dangling out of his mouth. I've got a pretty cool graphic of him with this dart hanging off his lower lip. I don't know if that's the R-rated Mr. Met. If that's the one that's been created, that's cycling about. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Fastball swung on this ball. is looped softly over to the right side, coming in and making the catch is Yuma Tongu. And that is going to retire Yanagita for the first out of the inning. So one gun for Yanagita. That's going to bring up the first baseman, Hataka Yamakawa. And for Yamakawa, he is... 
Walked his first time up. He had an eight-pitch at bat. Still one for eight on the early going. The only hit he has is that home run he had in the opener. I think when I'm back in Japan the next time, I want to complete my mini helmet. Picked up a sight of a Cebu Lions one at the Lions home game, but you can get all the little mini helmets. They've had those a few times at different places. I think Dairy Queen ran a promotion a long time ago. Fastball misses outside for a ball. When I was a kid, I got the mini helmets, and they were, I believe, we were getting them down in the States in like Florida, Georgia, different places. And it was at, I think the Days In chain had like an ice cream type stand within their facility. Fastball misses outside. The count is 2-0, and oh, but that's going back many years ago. Psychedelic Validity pops in and says, anybody know how to watch these games? Well, if you're a member of our channel, we have a laundry list of locations on where you can actually watch the game from. There's a fastball that misses outside. The count goes to 3-0. and We provide the English commentary as the Japanese games are the ones that are there. Not all places, depending upon where you're located in the United States, North America, or Europe, will be able to give you the games. Here's the 3-0. Fastball just misses down. It's going to be ball four, and Yamakawa is aboard on four straight pitches. And he is going to... Draw himself a walk, and that's going to bring Kensky Kondo to the plate. Baseball lover says, yeah, it's cool. I think it was, I want to say it was days in, and they used to have like a little stand, like not really, like kind of where they do the breakfast type things these days at some of the hotels. They used to have like ice cream, and you could get the, the, the scooped style, the hard ice cream. And you could get it in a little mini helmet. Well, that brings Kensky Kondo to the plate. He is 0 for 1. He popped to the catcher his first time up back in the second inning. One gone here and Yamakawa at first. Pitches on the way. There's a fastball swung on. This ball is belted into deep right center field. Racing back and giving chase and making the catch is Watanabe. Oh, what a play. And now they're going to fire it back in. Are they going to get a chance to double off Yamakawa? And it sure looks like that's going to happen. He is going to be retired. It looks like it's going to be... Nine, six, four to three, as he was all the way around the third base trying to score from first. So that's he's going to be put out for out number two. So, or I should say, eight, six, four, three on the put out. Double play as Kondo sent that ball to the right fielder and he was retired for the second out. Well, they don't strand anybody here. No runs in the inning, no hits, no errors, nobody left the board. We are now through. Three and a half innings, your score is the Hawks nothing and the Buffaloes nothing. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back here in just a couple moments. Appreciate you guys for jumping in here with us tonight on the Last Traps Baseball YouTube channel. Hang tight. We'll be right back after this. Hello, this is Eric Fox, formerly of the Oakland A's and Texas Rangers baseball teams. If you want to learn about Japanese baseball, see Coach Fred, Last Traps Baseball. If you want to baseball instruction, see Coach Fred. If you want to learn about golf, do not go to Coach Fred. Fred, what kind of club is this? At Last Draft's Baseball, we know baseball. Welcome back, everybody. It is going to be the two, three, and four hitters to come to bat here for the Buffaloes tonight. That means Watanabe, Nishikawa, and Sedanio. Our friend TYN says, who do you think will win this game, Oryx or the Hawks? We put our pregame predictions up on our channel. So if you're subscribed to our channel on the community page, we've given the predictions on each of the first three games 
And we have chosen the Buffaloes to win this one. There's a first pitch fastball. Take it for a called strike. The count is 0-1 to Watanabe. That pitch came in at 96 miles an hour. 39 pitches through the first three innings for Carter Stewart Jr. As he delivers a fastball that just misses inside, and the count goes even to 1-1. One one. Personally speaking, I think that the home field advantage that we give tonight to the in this series as the pitch is a fastball that misses down, and the count now goes to two and one. So two balls and one strike. If this series was being played in Fukuoka, I'll probably give the nod to the Hawks. Here's the two one fastball that's taken for a called strike, and the count now goes to two and two. So two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Fastball delivered, popped up in the infield over on the right side, racing in on it is Yamakawa. He's underneath it. He makes the catch, and that is going to retire Watanabe. And he is gone for the first out of the inning. So two up and two away. That'll bring, or sorry, one up and one away. That'll bring up the left fielder, Ryoma Nishikawa. Our friend Baseball Lover says he's going to get his score box, score books out. And keep the score with us. Yeah, it keeps in tune. And sometimes when I go to the major league games, I'll take the scorebook if I'm going by myself. Be heading down the highway in another couple of weeks to catch the Cincinnati Reds and Seattle Mariners. They'll be in town. I'm going to try to go at the end of the month to see the Atlanta Braves and the Mariners as well. There's a fastball that misses down, and the count is a 1-0 to Nishikawa. Of course, a little bit later after that, be on my way to Seattle to catch the, sorry, be on my way to San Francisco, catch the A's and the Giants this year. Fastball swung on and missed. The count now goes to 2-1 and one on Nishikawa. I want to try to get to the Coliseum before the Oakland A's depart to wherever they're going to play next year. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fastball on the way, swung on, grounded to the right side. Fielded by Yamakawa, he throws off a one leg in foul territory to Carter Stewart covering. That's going to retire Nishikawa. It's going to go down in the books as a ground out, three to one. And Nishikawa looking a little nimble on that play. That's going to leave it up to the designated hitter, Leandro Cedeno. So starter Carter Stewart Jr. cruising along here. Rocco asked the question, where is this game at? This game is at the Kyocera Dome in Osaka. The Buffaloes are the home team. Here comes the pitch. Fastball taken for a called strike. The count is 0-1 to Cedeno. Living Room says it's still on one on in his screen. Fastball misses upstairs. The count goes to 1-1. One one. So one ball and one strike. We'll put our schedule up in the next couple of days for what we'll be doing toward next weekend. Haven't ironed that out quite yet. As we mentioned, going to be out of town for a couple of days early in the week, so won't be doing anything on the Tuesday and Wednesday games. As there's a pitch that misses down, it's now 2-1 to Cedeno. Cedeno is in scoring position as soon as he steps into the batter's box. The big fella here. Can definitely put a jolt into the ball. I remember watching him in the preseason last year when he was wearing the training number 123, I think it was. Breaking ball swung on, lifted down the right field line. Racing over is Yamakawa, but he's going to watch that drift into the seats. That's going to run the count now to two and two. So two balls and two strikes it is. As I do look ahead to next weekend, strong likelihood... Of us making the call on the games, probably the Marines and the Buffaloes. There's a split finger pitch swung on and missed. Cedeno down on strikes. That's the third out of the inning. And the Buffaloes go in order here in inning number four. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left the board. We are now through four complete. Your score is the Hawks nothing and the Buffaloes nothing. Stick around, everybody. The top of the fifth inning is just around the corner. Appreciate you guys for being here tonight.
Our friend Drew's Box Break says, who's everybody's prediction to win? Ours are on our community page. We'll check it out. You can see all six games that we have here tonight, but we'll leave it to everybody else in the chat to let us know who they think is going to win. We'll be back in just a few after this. We got a nothing nothing ball game. We'll be back in just a few. We appreciate you guys for bouncing in here with us tonight. It is the Buffaloes and the Hawks all locked at zeros. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It is going to be the six, seven, and eight hitters to come to bat against Tajima. That means Curry Hara, Walker, and Maki Hara to face the lefty here in inning number five. So, this is usually the time where all of the people who are the gamblers like to come in. It looks like it is right now sitting firmly on the under, locked at zeros, as the first five innings will come to an end here in just a bit. First pitch fastball delivered to Curry Hara, misses outside. It's 1 and 0. Oh. So 63 pitches through four innings for Tajima. As he is ready to go again, the pitch on the way, fastball just misses outside. The count goes to 2 and 0. Oh. Two balls and no strikes to Ryoya Curry Hara. We started to say this in the, a couple innings ago. There are 11 players right now on Major League rosters that are Japanese-born. Fastball misses upstairs. The count goes to 3-0. Five players did not see action tonight, but across Major League Baseball, there were plenty of Japanese action. You say Kikuchi got the start for the Blue Jays today. He took the lump. He went four and a third innings, six hits, three runs, all earned. Three walks and four Ks. There was a breaking ball delivered for a strength to Kurihara. If you get a chance, go check out the highlights of the Blue Jays and the Rays. The bench is cleared. When Yenesis Cabrera had a little run-in with Jose Caballero over at third base, breaking ball drops in for a called strike. The count now is full to Kurihara. Psychedelic Validity said Severino was a disaster today. Drew's box break says Oryx is his last leg. Well, we picked Oryx, so we're in there with you. Fastball swung on and missed. Curry Hara down on strikes. Tajima comes all the way back to blow it by the third baseman of the Hawks. He's gone for the first out of the inning. That's going to bring up the designated hitter, Adam Walker. Psychedelic Validity also says we don't know why they picked him up off the Yanks. Well, I hate to say it, but the New York Mets, I think, are a tire fire ready to happen. I know our friend baseball lovers in the house here. Breaking ball misses down. Account is 1-0. and oh. I have a feeling Pete Alonso is going to be dealt by the deadline. They're not going to lock him up long term. They lost that opportunity to do that when he had those previous agents. There's a breaking ball swung on and missed. Account is 1-1. One and one. He said they almost had their first ball Friday because of Hoskins. Yeah, that was kind of cheap. I thought Hoskins slid late. He did keep his feet down, but with the new rules of going through the base, there's a fastball swung on this ball. It's belted into deep center field. This ball could be trouble. Moving back, looking up, and is it going to be off the wall or is it going to be gone? We can't tell yet. The reaction at Tajima looks like that this ball is gone, and Adam Walker has broken open the scoring here with a solo shot to straightaway center field. 
couldn't tell if it was off the wall or if it hit the facing of that silver that's that first deck but that's exactly where it is so the hawks have jumped out in front here one to nothing on the adam walker home run that's only his second hit of the year as he gets high fives all the way around from his teammates and the baseball comes back so adam walker with a run here and that's going to bring up Ticey Makihara to the plate. It was last season, I think it was Adam, or maybe it was the year before, Adam's dad checked in on the channel. Here comes the first offering from the lefty. There's a fastball ticket for a called strike, and the count is 0-1. He was browsing around looking to see if he could get information on his son who had made the journey over to Japan. I believe it's year number three for Walker. Fastball swung on, grounded to short, fielded by Kirby Ashi, fires across the diamond, and Makihara's gone for out number two. Ground out six to three. Two in the books here, and that's going to bring up the catcher, Takashi Amino. Rocco says, C staff is lights out and all young. Seattle staff, yeah, pretty much when your ace, your staff is Luis Castillo, and I don't think he's, I'm not sure if he's 30 yet. That is a pretty solid staff. Fastball swung on. This ball is lifted into shallow left center field. Coming over Nishikawa, also Watnabe, Watnabe there to make the catch. But we've broken the ice here in this one. The solo shot by Adam Walker has the Hawks out in front. One run, one hit, no errors, nobody left the board. We are now moving through to the bottom of the fifth inning. Your score is the Hawks, one and the Buffaloes, no score. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back with the call of the bottom of the second inning when we return. Appreciate all you guys for being here. Here is our buddy Steve Rademacher. This is Steve Rademacher, and I'd like to introduce you to my channel if you haven't seen it before. These are all the things I enjoy. Sports, autographs, relics, non-sports, Hall of Famers, pseudo-sports, Star Wars. That's my channel name and my name. And I would really appreciate it if you would come check me out and maybe even subscribe if you like it. Thank you for that for now. And back to your ball game. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It is going to be Tomoya Mori, Yuma Tongu, and Yuma Mune to come to bat here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Psychedelic Validity says, need some Oryx magic. The Hawks aren't good. Actually, the Hawks are pretty good. The core is still good. They're just a little bit on the older side. The pitching has had a, a few kinks in the armor. I would say that this is a preview of the Climax series, one would have to think. But I will say this, they do need to get some more impact from some of their import players. Hawks do have money to spend. I'm curious to see if they would consider adding another pitcher by the name of Urias. There's a first pitch breaking ball that misses up and away, and the counter's 1-0. There's talk about Julio Urias making his move over to the NPB. Here's the pitch. That's a split figure pitch taken for a called strike. And the count goes to one and one. Rocco says, I believe he was taking the top five picks in the MLB draft. No, I don't think you're wrong. He was considered a prospect at one time. I believe he came from the Minnesota Twins organization. As that last pitch was a breaking ball that is swung on and missed by Maury. One ball and two strikes. So the right-hander 
Rocks into the delivery, kicks and fires. Fastball misses upstairs. The count now goes to two and two. Rocco says, did you see this as a pitching matchup? Yeah, with Tajima on the hill and Stewart on the mound. I don't know if I would have seen it as a one nothing game, probably a maybe a 2-1 or a 3-2 game by this point. But then you get into the bullpens. Both the bullpens are pretty much locked down. Breaking ball misses outside. That's going to be 3-2 and two to Maury. They can get you some starts, and they can go deep for you. And these two here was definitely where we're at. Here comes the pitch. 3-2 on the way. Breaking ball swung on. Pop foul. It's going to reach the seats on the third base side of home plate. Keeps the count at 3-2 and two to Maury. Just as a reminder... The bottom half of the inning here is in between the fifth and the sixth innings. We like to call our Japanese halftime. That's where they take an extended break. Uh, we will as well, as we'll put the music on loop and loop it around for you. There's a fastball swung on and fouled away. Count remains at three and two to Mori. As we will bounce out and get ourselves a fresh cup of tea, as that is the beverage of choice tonight. There's the pitch, another fastball swung on, and another one lifted foul into the seats. That last pitch came in at 97 miles an hour. Drew asked the question, how long is the break again? Uh, generally speaking, in between each half inning, it's about one minute. Unlike Major League Baseball, which is about two minutes to 2.30. There's a fastball swung on and grounded foul down the right field line, and the count remains at 3-2. and two. This is turning into a marathon at bat. This is going to be the 10th pitch coming up here to the left-handed hitting Mori. But generally, the halftime break that we like to call it, you're looking at it probably about a six or seven minute break. They come out and they run the, well, at this particular field where they have the cutouts, they come over and they change the bases. They do the grooming of the dirt, make the mound repairs, fix up the batter's box. 3-2 on the way. Breaking ball just misses outside. That's going to be ball four. And Mori is aboard with a leadoff walk here, and that's going to bring up the first baseman, Yuma Tongu. So it usually allows us some time to get our drink, get a little snack, stretch our legs, and be ready for the back half of the ball game. So Tongu, the runner at first. As Drew says, yeah, slightly extended. He'll grab a snack as well. Absolutely. I remember the first time I heard about this, I remember I knew a guy who was umpiring in the World University Games when it was in Singapore one year. No, sorry, it was in Taiwan. Breaking ball misses upstairs, and the count goes to 1-0 on Tongu. And Don was telling me, he said that, after the fifth inning, he said they took a break and uh, he couldn't understand why the teams were coming off the field. First time he'd ever seen it. And somebody came in and was going halftime, halftime. And so they would go in and underneath the umpires would and they would go and eat grapes and they'd have all kinds of food set up for them and they'd get their water break. There was a breaking ball missing upstairs and the catcher, you may know, has called time. It's 2-0 and here to Tongu and it looks like the Carter Stewart has lost some command of his pitches here in the fifth inning. Nobody up at throwing yet in the bullpen, but there is the concerned look on the faces of the Hawks brass. Psychedelic Validity said the Hawks had a two-run shot last night, or Oryx did. I thought that was in the fifth inning last night. And that was the game changer at that point. So 65 pitches right now here for the right-hander, Stewart. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball drops in for a called strike, and the count now goes to two and one. Interested to see how Stewart fares here. Sometimes you get pitchers and they're cruising right along, and all of a sudden they get to a spot in the game where they just can't quite get over the hump. The hump being that of maybe it's their conditioning, maybe they haven't got that ability to get through. There's a fastball missing upstairs. It's now three and one, but I guarantee if he walks this hitter, the bells and whistles will be going on 
in the bullpen for sure. And you can see the Hawks are ready to get on the call here. Jackson says, do you have a good app to check the scores? I just go right to the NPB main page itself. There used to be a good one last year. There's a breaking ball that misses. That's upstairs. Back-to-back -back walks issued now here by Carter Stewart Jr. He's got himself in a little bit of trouble. It's going to bring up the third baseman, Yuma Mune. It's going to bring the pitching coach out of the dugout. And I have a feeling there's going to be some calls to the bullpen here because you certainly don't want to let this one get away on you here in the fifth inning. There used to be an app. There was a Japanese app that there was last year that I saw over in Japan. One of the fellows that I was sitting by beside in one of the games at the Kyocera Dome had it, and he was showing me, but everything's all in Japanese. But I generally just go to the NPB website and pull the information off of that there. There was a, a site called Hosted. It was all the sports scores, but it was down last year, and we haven't seen anything up this year, which is disappointing because it was pretty good. I used to pop that in the link of the chat every once in a while. So people could take a look at the box scores, but those are long gone. I'm not sure what happened. The site is down and it hasn't been back up. So I don't know if it's even going to exist anymore. I do use the Google sometimes, but that's if I'm desperate. So Yuma Mune at the plate. He squares the bunt. They throw down to second base and advancing over to third. Oh, what a play there by Tamoya Mori. Oh, boy. Fantastic heads-up play. So what happened was is they got runners at first and second. They squared the bunt. They ended up trying to back pick Mori at second base. Mori takes off over to third. He slides in safely. Be a stolen base. Now they got runners on the corners. Unbelievable. He had got off a little too far, and they threw down to second base. And the next thing you know, as Maury takes off for third, and as that happens, we, we've got a bit of a challenge with our feed here. We haven't had any problems with that so far tonight. Hopefully we can get it back for you as quickly as possible. If not, we're going to have to go to our B feed. We haven't had to do this over the first couple of nights. It looks like we may have to do it tonight. So tomorrow, Maury is at third. That first pitch was a ball to Yuma Mune. And our feed is back on. As we didn't have the B feed running at that point in time. So we've got one ball and no strikes. Mune batting here. Let's see if he's going to square the bunt again. They throw over first. No sign of that happening. Diving back in time as the runner, Yuma Tongu. Psychedelic Validity says, let's go Buffaloes. Got to get at least one run back here is for sure. This is the time to do it. You get into the Hawks bullpen, it could be lights out in a hurry. There's a breaking ball that misses inside and the count is two and one. Roberto Osuna at the back end is... Pretty much automatic, at least for the NPB or by NPB standards. All the other games are underway, and there has been some scoring around the NPB. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Fastball swung on, popped up into right field. It might be deep enough. Yanagita coming underneath it. He makes the catch. Tagging at third is Mori. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. They throw down to second. And they're going to get Tongu on a double play. That's actually a good decision to do that, to force the defense to have to cut the ball. So Mune is going to be gone. It's going to be a sacrifice to nine. They're, he's going to get himself an RBI. Tongu is going to be retired. It's going to go nine to three to six. So that will be a double play. Scoring from third and tagging is Mori. Let's see if he left early because that would be a triple play. That would be ugly. Let's see there. It looked like he had tagged and he didn't go. I'd still throw over just out of principle to see if they could make it a, a triple play. Depending on how close it was. But Mori has scored and he's going to go down the tunnel. Yuma Mune does the job. We are all locked up at ones. And that brings Yatara Sugimoto to the plate. 
The first pitch fastball is swung on and fouled off down the left field line, and the count is 0-1 to Sugimoto. I also, at this point, wouldn't bat an eye that this game goes extra innings, much like the Dragons and the Base Stars last night, or sorry, the Dragons and the Swallows last night, with the full 12 innings. Just a quick look around the league. It's nothing, nothing between the Tigers and the Giants. Fastball misses up to Sugimoto, counts one and one. It's three, nothing in the bottom of the third at the Jinju as the Swallows are beating up on the Dragons. Base Stars have a one, nothing lead over the Carp. That is in the top of the second inning. Here's the one, one pitch. Fastball swung on and missed by Sugimoto. In the Pacific League, outside of this one, the Fighters and the Marines are locked at zeros, and the Eagles have come from behind to tie the game at three. Bottom of the fourth inning, they're playing the Lions. Get, that gets you caught up on all the out-of-town scores. Here's the one-two. Breaking ball, taken for a called third strike. Sugimoto stood there like the house by the side of the road. He watched it go by for out number three, and that's going to do it here in the fifth inning. But we're all square once again. One run. In the inning on the sacrifice fly by Yuma Mune, there were no hits, there were no errors, and there were nobody left aboard. Your score as we are now through five complete, it is the Hawks one and the Buffaloes one. We'll be back in just a few with all the action. Appreciate you guys for being here. If you had the over at one and a half, there you go. Our friend Tunami in here has got himself a win. We're going to put the music on loop. We'll be back in just a few. Hang tight, everybody. Appreciate you all for being with us.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just in the what we like to call the Japanese halftime. It is the extended break between the fifth and the sixth inning as they are doing their grounds crew maintenance. Pretty quick and easy scoring recap for everybody here. It is 1-1. Buffalo scored and the Hawks scored their runs in the fifth inning in the top of the fifth. With one out, it was an Adam Walker solo shot to pretty much straightaway center field. Opened the scoring for Fukuoka, giving them a 1-0 lead. Bottom of the fifth, there was a Tomoya Mori walk and then a Yuma Tongu walk. And then it was a stolen base at third base by Mori. As the catcher, Umino, had thrown in behind him at second base, Mori took off for third. He made it safely. And then it was a sack fly by Mune to bring him home. It was a double play as Tongu ended up getting thrown out at second. And that is where we stay at 1-1. We do have a pitching change on our hands here. It does look like it's going to be Kosei Yoshida who's going to be making his second appearance. We saw him in the opener on Friday night. We'll just confirm that. That's exactly who it is. So Kosei Yoshida coming on in relief of Daiki Tajima. Yoshida, if you're not familiar with it, he was originally drafted by the Hokkaido Dupont Ham Fighters. And he ended up, he was a star in the Koshin tournament. And he never really found his sea legs there. He was the top overall pick in the draft a few years ago. But he came in and he pitched really well the other night. He's going to get another opportunity here. They did use him as a starter a couple times in Hokkaido. And then they brought him out of the bullpen. He's not a big guy. He's just a little fella. He's probably about 5'7 or 5'8. Can really bring the ball up to the plate. And he is going to be coming on in relief here. So the Buffaloes acquired him. There was a trade to have that it was made as they had made a inner league trade with the fighters. And he is in their uniform here. He'll be facing the top of the order. It'll be Yukio Shudo, Kenta Emamiya, and Yuki Yanagita. It's not going to be easy for him here against this crew as the game is ready to resume. And the first pitch of the sixth inning is on the way. It's a fastball that's taken for a called strike. And the count is 0-1 to Shudo. Shudo tight is 1-2. for two. He had a bunt single his last time up. Drew asked the question, is he a good pitcher? Fastball swung on and missed. The count now goes to 0-2. As a high schooler, he was absolutely outstanding. And he threw something crazy. It was like he threw about 700 and some odd pitches in a, about an eight-day window. And if you're familiar with the Koshin, that's where they pitch every two or three days. Some of these guys just become legends. Fastball swung on, chopped over the head of the pitcher, fielded by the shortstop, throws to first, and that is going to retire Shudo on a ground out 6-3. to three. Shudo gone for the first start of the inning. Brings up the shortstop, Kenta Imamiya. Rocco says 1.5 for five innings seems a bit low. Yeah, I didn't check to see what the over-unders. I have limited things on, on the platform that I look at. So sometimes we get it for the whole game. We get it for the spreads of the game as the first pitch fastball misses outside to Emamiya. And then, of course, just what it is straight up. But I do take a look in to see what the it is on the dailies. I try to make my picks first and then I go look at the odds. I don't necessarily want to know what the odds are first. There's a fastball that misses upstairs. It's now 2-0 to Emamiya. Certainly in the case of Yoshida, you would like to think that you want to try to get the first two outs here because to face Yanagita or Yamakawa or Kondo with runners on base could lead to multiple runs being scored. There's a breaking ball that catches the outside corner and the count's now 2-1. Yeah, it just happened to be over in Japan at that time when that happened, when Yoshida was, uh, just after that season, Yoshida was the big thing coming out of high school. Fastball swung on. This is lifted into right field. Coming in and making the catch is the right fielder for the Buffaloes. That's Sugimoto. And down goes Imamiya for the second out of the inning. So he was kind of the talk of the town, or the at least of the baseball world coming out of the Koshin tournament. That's the huge tournament in Japan, they hold it every year. They've got a spring tournament and they have a summer tournament. I have a buddy of mine who was 
on the winning team in 1993 in the spring tournament. Here's the pitch. That's a breaking ball that misses for ball one. The count's 1-0 and to Yuki Yanagita. He was chuckling. He says to me, there's only 15 of these gold medals around, and the gold medal itself, it's like about a half inch thick and about three inches in diameter. There's a breaking ball, waved that and missed, and the count now goes to one and one. It's actually really impressive. Gold medals are a work of art. Tsunami says, yeah, it scores 1-1. Really tight pitchers here. Fastball that misses down and away, and the count goes to 2-1. and one. I'm just curious to see if they're going to bring Carter Stewart Jr. back out for another inning or if the Hawks will also go to the bullpen. And then we got a battle of the pens the rest of the way. It could be slim pickings for another run. Fastball misses down and away, and the count now goes to 3-1 and one on Yanagita. So three balls and one strike. Catcher Mori gives his sign to the youngster who kicks and delivers. And there's a breaking ball swung on. This ball is lifted into left field. Ishikawa's got all kinds of room as he drifts to the foul line, and he makes the catch. And that's a 1-2-3 inning. Yoshida comes in and does his job as he's able to retire the Hawks in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left the board. And based on what we see here, the Fukuoka manager is coming out talking to the home plate umpire, and that pretty much means that'll probably mean the night for Carter Stewart Jr. is over as well. We'll be back in just a few minutes with all the action, everybody. We appreciate you guys for hanging with us on your Saturday night or Sunday morning, wherever you're at in North America, or maybe you're listening abroad as well. Here is our friend Matt, and this is for the living room if he's still listening in. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Namaste. Hey, I hope you guys have been enjoying the game. My name is Hollis. I've got a YouTube channel called Another Hollis Build. Um, I love baseball cards. I open up brand new product for you guys. I open up old stuff. I do breaks. I do auctions. All kinds of stuff concerning baseball. I'm Friars Faithful, Padres to the end. I also love Garbage Pail Kids and my animals. I have a ton of animals. It's like a mini petting zoo here around my house. I also love my city. San Diego, baby. I'll take you all around the city and show you what's up. Um, if you guys dig stuff like that, cruise on over and check it out. It's another Hollis build. If you dig it, subscribe. I, I'd really appreciate to have more follow me along on the journey. Hey, either way, you guys have a wonderful day or a beautiful, beautiful evening. No matter which one it is, make sure that you make it great, my friends. Big up, Last Raps Baseball. Yeah, Freddy, let's go. One love and peace. Yeah, man. Welcome back, everybody. That is our buddy, Matt Hollis. Be sure to check him out after the game and see what he's got cooking up his sleeves. We have more scoring from the out-of-town scoreboard in the Central League. Still 0-0, bottom of the third inning between the Giants and the Tigers. The Dragons are on the board. It is in the bottom of the fourth inning. It is now 3-1 to one as the Swallows are all locked up. 1-1 one, one in the bottom of the second between the Base Stars and the Carp. As one of our friends had pointed out earlier, the Carp have evened it up. It's 3-3 with the Eagles and the Lions. That's in the bottom of the fifth. 0-0 zero, zero, Fighters and Marines. That is in the top of the third, and we are locked at ones here in this one tonight. It'll be the 9-1-2 and two batters coming to bat, and Fukuoka has gone to the bullpen. They have turned to Yuki Samori, right-hander here to face the Buffaloes, and the first pitch from him is a breaking ball missing outside. Count is 1-0. and oh. So Yuki Samori on in relief. So both teams now gone to the pen, and I would expect the rest of the night it'll be bullpen central. There is a breaking ball swung on and a lifted foul. Count is 1-1 one and one to Kirby Ashi. So who will blink first here, or will this game stretch out into the extra innings? was an extra inning affair last night that went 12 innings and ended in a tie, and that was the game between the Swallows and the Dragons. We kind of chuckled a little bit. A win is a win, and a tie for the Dragons is like a win. There's a fastball taken at the knees for a called strike. The count is one and two. I have to be honest. I 
saw the Dragons play last year in Hiroshima, and one of the things that came to mind, and I think about their roster, and we don't watch them or see them regularly, but I don't really know how they're going to find their way out of this. I mean, they're going to be getting high picks. They're going to be drafting. And there's a fastball swung on it. It is lined softly over to the second baseman. A nice catch there by Makihara. That's going to retire Kirby Ashi. He's gone for out number one. Bring up the top of the order in Rio Oda. I just don't really know where the Dragons are going to be able to, to do this. Drew said, did I pick Tokyo for our picks tonight? The Murray Giants or the Swallows? I picked the Swallows to win that one. I picked the Giants to lose tonight, actually. There's a pitch that misses down. Count is 1-0 to Oda. Yeah, I got the Swallows to win. Hard pressed for the, the best of times to pick the Dragons. Uh, they're going to have to win some games. There's a fastball that misses down and away, and the count goes even at 1-1. One and one. Just the Basics asked the question, who do we choose in this game? I took the Buffaloes. Buffaloes in this game here tonight. It's a, you know, the Hawks, if this game was being played in Fukuoka, it's probably the other way around. There's a fastball swung on, belted down the left field line, but it's going to get hooked into the netting. Runs the count to one and two on Oda. I just think that the needle here points towards the Buffaloes in this one. We started giving you the other stats from around the Japanese players in Major League Baseball. Kenta Maeda made his debut for the Tigers today. He got roughed up in his three and a third innings. Gave up seven hits and six runs. Here's the pitch. It is a breaking ball delivered to Oda. Lifted into straightaway center field. Shooto un underneath that he makes the catch. That's going to retire Oda for the second out of the inning. So two up and two away, and that's going to leave it all up to the center fielder, Ryoto Watanabe. Our friend Rocco says, I'm new. How do they handle extra innings? They don't have a ghost runner. They play it straight up baseball, and if it goes to the 12th inning, after 12 innings, the game is ruled a tie. I was thinking about it today, and I'm not necessarily – Against that. I almost prefer that than the ghost writer, than the ghost runners, as there's a fastball that misses down to Watanabe. One ball and no strikes. Here's the 1-0. Fastball swung on it is lifted into shallow left field. Camping out underneath it is the left fielder Kondo. He's going to make the catch, and that's going to do it as the Buffaloes are gone here in inning number six. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left the board. We're now through six complete. Your score is the Hawks one and the Buffaloes one. Our friend Zay in the house tonight. Appreciate you being here and checking in. We'll be back here in just a few. Hopefully you guys are still with us. 1-1 one, one is the score. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We are moving to the top of the seventh inning, and it is going to be the heart of the batting order to come to bat for Fukuoka. Well, we have a brand new pitcher in the ball game. It is going to be a number of 56 for the Buffaloes, and that indicates it's going to be Atsuya Kogita. He's going to be making his second appearance of the year. He had himself a pretty much a clean inning in his first appearance the other night. So Yoshida's night is done. Kogita's night is here. 
as we are ready to resume the action in just a moment. So Kogita completes his warm-up tosses. As we said, he's going to be facing the heart of the order. It's going to be Yamakawa, Kondo, and Kurihara to face the right-hander now in this battle of the bullpens. I think that we had mentioned before that if I had to point the needle to the bullpens, I have to probably give it a little bit towards the Fukuoka Ball Club, at least the latter part with Osuna in the ninth, Fuji in the eighth. So if the Buffaloes are going to score some runs, it's going to have to come here in the seventh, I would have to think. On the flip side, we saw the other night, I believe it was Yamazaki and Hirano had pitched the eighth and the ninth innings. So we'll see what the Buffaloes have up their sleeves here. We also saw last night, the ninth inning was delivered by The 100-mile-an-hour fastballs from, I believe, Mendoza last night. Here comes the first pitch. It's a fastball taken at the knees by Yamakawa. Back to work goes Kogita. There's a fastball taken down, and the count goes to 1-1. One and one. I have to go back and look at my game sheets. It was Andreas Bacciaro last night who pitched the eighth. And that was a pretty impressive eighth, sitting on 100 miles an hour for most of that inning. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. As he kicks and delivers a breaking ball swung on, it is popped up into shallow left center field. Coming in underneath it is the center fielder, Watanabe, and he's there to make the catch. And Yamakawa goes in the books for the first out, one gone here in the seventh. Our friend Zay said the fighters have bases loaded, just can't drive a run in. To go back and take a peek on that, see what's going on with the fighters and the Marines. It looks like it's still locked up at zeros. The Carp have now taken the lead over the Base Stars, 2-1 to one in that one, and the Swallows have extended their lead over the Dragons at 4-1. Lots of time left in that Carp Base Star game. Here's the pitch. First pitch fastball taken for a called strike, and the count is 0-1 to Kondo. Kondo tonight 0-2. for 2. He has flew into a double play, and... He popped to the catcher his two trips to the plate. Here's the 0-1 offering. Kagita kicks and delivers. Fastball swung on. This is lifted foul down the third baseline, and the count goes to 1-2 and two, or one two on Kondo. Kondo is 4-8 for eight in the early going this year. He doesn't have a hit tonight, though. The line score in this one, 1-2-0 one, oh for the Hawks, 1-1-0 one, one oh for the Buffaloes. Only three hits between these two teams, as it is a pitcher's night yet again at the Kyocera Dome. Here's the 0-2. Fastball backs Kondo off the plate, missing inside for a ball, and the count is 1-2. and two. So one ball and two strikes. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to bookmark the channel and We'll be posting up our action for next week. As there's the breaking ball that misses up and away, and the count goes to two and two. We were taking a look at the schedule a little earlier on. As we had mentioned before, we're going to be out of town for a couple of days this week. We're going to be away on Tuesday and Wednesday. So we won't be doing any midweek games. We may do the Thursdays or the Fridays, but if we do, we're leaning towards the Marines and the Buffaloes for next weekend. And if we do something earlier in the week, there is the possibility of a couple of games as well. Probably the Lions and the Buffaloes will be on the Thursday docket because that'll be a midweek 9 o'clock start. Hopefully we can get that one done. I have to race home and make sure that we're on the call for that one. That'll be on Thursday. So that'll be a midweek game Thursday at 9 o'clock Pacific, midnight Eastern, if you're going to be listening in. Rare midweek early game action. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Fastball misses down. It's now 3-2 and two to Kondo. But we will put our schedule up. So if we do the Thursday, most likely we'll double back and do the Friday in the middle of the night. And Saturday and Sunday, hopefully you guys can be with us for all that action. So three balls and two strikes to Kondo. One gone here in the seventh. As the right-hander Kagita kicks and fires. Fastball swung on. It is grounded past the diving first baseman, Tongu, in the shallow right field. 
Kondo is going to be aboard with a one-out single. And that is going to bring up the third baseman, Ryoya Kurihara. So the Hawks have a runner here with one aboard and one gone. Kurihara stepping to the plate. 0 for 2 tonight. He's flown to center and struck out his two trips to the plate. Kondo enjoying a chuckle with Yumatangu over at first base as he establishes his lead. Right-hander Kagita leans in, gets the sign from his catcher, Mori. He works himself set. And here comes the pitch. Fastball swung on this ball. is lined into right center field. It's going to get down for a base hit. Rounding second and heading third, and it's going to go all the way to the wall. Kondo rounding third, heading home. He's going to score. And it looks like we are going to be now, the tie has been broken, as that is going to be a double for Curry Hara. He collects himself an RBI. And the score is now 2-1 to one for the Hawks here in the seventh inning. I had a little bit of worry here with this part of the relief for the Buffaloes. Kokita has been smacked hard a couple times. That last, the hit by Kondo was drilled into right field just past the diving first baseman Tongu. And this ball here was drilled into the pull gap as well. So Kurihara with an RBI. That's his second hit of the year. First RBI of the 2024 campaign. And that's going to bring up the designated hitter, Adam Walker. And for Walker, he is one for two in this one. He has a home run in two trips. And the first pitch from Walker is a breaking ball. Swung on this is grounded, and it gets through Tongu in the right field, and that's going to get another run in. I don't know if that's going to be ruled an error or not. We're going to have to take a look here in just a moment, but that is going to increase the score line to three to one. Oh, boy. Well, they ruled that one a hit. So a favorable scoring decision by the Official score here could have went either way on that one. Let's take a look at the replay. Walker does a good job, goes inside, and the ball, oh, I can see why. The ball had some English on it, and it looked like it hit the lip of where the turf and the dirt meet. And as it looked like the Tongu was ready to square it up, the ball took a weird deflection to the left and got by him. And Kogita is going to stay in the game, but... The scoreline is now 3-1 to one here for the Hawks. So 3-1 is the scoreline. Runner at first is was Walker. We do have a pinch runner. We didn't get the number for that. Our friend Jason Stuff says they thought he'd drop into the stream as he's watching the game. Probably wanted to take some Maalox over the last couple of those plays that you had to watch. So that bat is Makihara. It is number 57 in the game to pinch run here for the Hawks. And the, the number on that, we'll have to get you in a moment. They throw over to first base and diving back in time is the pinch runner. Taking a look at our roster here, we don't see 57 on this one. We're going to have to jump to our other roster. See exactly who they have running. This might be the player who was in the ballgame the other night for the Hawks. And there is a fastball that's taken for a called strike. The count now is one strike to Taisi Makihara. Taking a quick peek here to see the if, who the runner for Walker would be. It looks like it's Ogata. So Rico Ogata on at first base. We saw him the other night. He had come into the ball game, but he is not on our score sheet for the Hawks. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. He delivers. It is a breaking ball that is waved at it missed. The count now goes to 0-2 on Makihara.
good pitch. Pitch was well down. Akihara could not pull the trigger and make it contact. Jason is pumping a lot of stuff into the chat here. He says the bees need a win today to keep the streak going. M's in bees. Yep, Mariners beat the Red Sox as he is a West Coast guy. So here comes the 0-2 pitch from Kagita. He delivers a breaking ball that misses outside, and the count now goes to 1-2. and two. So one ball and two strikes it is. Makihara is 0 for 2 in this one here, and he is 1 for 9 in the series. So you start the year, as we said, hits have been at a premium tonight for both of these clubs. Three hits in the inning so far for the Hawks. They've strung them together back to back to back. Only five of the ball game, and there's a breaking ball swung on and tap foul behind home plate. Count remains at one and two. Looks like the Marines have jumped out in front of the fighters, one nothing in the bottom of the third inning. 3-3 three, three Eagles and Lions, 2-1 for the Carp over the Bay Stars, 4-1 for the Swallows over the Dragons. Nothing, nothing with the Giants and the Tigers. Here comes the 1-2 pitch. Instead, they throw over to first base and diving back in time is the runner Ogata. Our friend Drew says, do you think Oryx can still win? Our friend Jason says, yes, I think so too. I mean, they've got some serious pop in the lineup. Just got to get somebody on base and somebody can run into a swing and that could tie the game up in a big hurry. They've just got to get through. I would think we're going to see Matsumoto in the next inning, and I would think we're going to see Fuji, and then I think we see Osuna if the scoreline stays similar. But the deeper it gets, the more difficult it becomes. So they would have to try to get to Matsumoto in the bottom half of this inning. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball swung on, grounded up the middle. Oh, nice play by the second baseman, Oda. He backhand gloves, flips it to Kirby Ashi over to first for an inning-ending double play. And that is going to do it here. That's going to be of the 4-6-3 variety. That is definitely a highlight reel double play. And that will do it here for the seventh inning. But the damage has been done. There's been two runs in the inning on three hits. There were no errors, and there was nobody left the board. We're now moving to the bottom of the seventh inning. Your score is the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks 3. The Oryx Buffaloes won. Hang tight, everybody. We'll be back in just a moment. It's the three, four, and five hitters to come to bat for the Hawk or for the Buffaloes. We'll be right back after this. We've got ourselves a 3-1 ball game. We'll be back in 30 seconds with all the action, everybody. Appreciate you guys for jumping in tonight on the Last Rounds Baseball YouTube channel. It is 3-1 Hawks. We'll be back in just a few.
Welcome back, welcome back, everybody. As we projected, it's going to be Yuki Matsumoto coming on in relief here. This is what we saw in game one of the series. And we also are going to see Takuya Kai behind the plate as we projected earlier on in the ball game. So Takuya Kai is coming in as the catcher here. And Yuki Matsumoto looks like they have a new second baseman as well. As it looks like the night is going to be over for Taisi Makihara. And that looks like it is going to be Masaki Mamori coming in at second. So I'm not sure where they're going to put them in in the batting order. But I do believe it'll probably be, well, who knows? They might do a double switch. And then we, maybe we see Kai moving into the eighth spot. So we'll have to reserve a little bit of that here for a little bit when they come to bat in the next half inning. So the first pitch from Matsumoto is a fastball that misses down, and the count is 1-0 to Ryoma Nishikawa. So this is where Nishikawa's got to set the table, and then you've got Sedeno, Mori, and Tongu, three boppers to come to bat here. As the right-hander Matsumoto ready to deliver, he kicks and fires. Fastball misses upstairs. Nice job by Nishikawa to lay off that heat. Count now goes to 2-0. So Yuki Matsumoto on in relief here, pitcher number three used by the Fukuoka Ball Club. Here's the 2-0. Fastball ticket for a called strike, and the count now goes to 2-1. and one. Our friend Titus in the house tonight, he says, Happy Easter. We thank you very much for being here. Our friend Jason cleaning house in the chat. Here's the pitch. Fastball misses inside. Count goes to three and one on Nishikawa. Got to get myself a new battle station set up here or a new nest. Just the way I'm sitting and doing this game here, it feels like I, my back is pinching in the lower back. Either that or I should be standing calling these games. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. Fastball taken for a called strike. The count now goes to 3-2. and two. Our friend the living room is dropping his eggs in here as well. So three balls and two strikes to Nishikawa. He's leading it off here in the seventh inning from the Buffaloes. They've got to find their way back here in this one. They're going to get a chance to do it. This would probably be the inning to do it. Here's the 3-2. Pitch on the way. Fastball swung on and fouled away. Count remains at 3-2 and two to Nishikawa. So three balls and two strikes it is. Trying to keep up with the scoring from around the NPB. As we said, there's... All kinds of stuff going on now. Most of the games are in the middle frames, with the exception of this one. Three balls and two strikes as the righty Matsumoto ready to deliver again. Here's the pitch to Nishikawa. He kicks and he fires. Fastball swung on and fouled away. Behind home plate and the battle continues. It's still three and two. It's going to be the eighth pitch coming up here to Nishikawa. That's one thing you do like if you can, even if you can't get on here, an 8-9 pitch at bat to the leadoff hitter really can take the sting out of the tail of the pitcher, really make him work on batter number one. Eight Pitch number eight ready to come here as the right-hander gets his sign from his catcher, Takuya Kai. And here comes the offering. He kicks and delivers. Fastball swung on this ball. is lifted down the left field line. Drifting over. This is going to be trouble. It's in the corner and it's off the wall. Rounding first and heading to second is Nishikawa. And he's got himself a double here. Great piece of hitting. And just as I said, this is going to be a table setter. This is going to bring up Leandro Cedeno to the plate. Nothing like bringing the big dogs to the plate. Sedano, Mori, and Tongu can all bash with the best of them. 
Nishikawa, to his credit, he sent the ball a long way. It short hopped off the fence. Nice job by Kondo to play it off the wall. To get that ball back in. So Nishikawa, with his second hit of the night, he is now 3 for 10 on the early going. That'll be good news for Buffalo fans as he potentially can find his groove. It brings Sedano to the plate, who has struck out twice tonight. This is his first time he has faced Yuki Matsumoto. 35,922 people in attendance tonight. We've had three good crowds at the Kyocera Dome. Here's the pitch. Fastball misses outside, and the count is 1-0. Oh, Sedano getting himself into a good hitter's count right here. Tomoya Mori is on deck, and Yuma Tongu in the hole. So one ball and no strikes to Sedano. Big right-handed hitting DH waiting on the offering from the right-hander Matsumoto. Here comes the pitch. Fastball swung on. This ball is lifted into straightaway center field. Not deep enough. Lots of room there for Shudo to make the catch, and that's going to retire Sedano. He just got underneath that one. I think he'll want that one back. He's gone for the first out of the inning, and that's going to bring up the catcher, Tomoya Mori. Yeah, we can't put the links in here. And we've told people when they've come in, we see we got uh, HDSS. If you want to become a member of the channel, you're more than welcome to do that. We have a laundry list of places that can lead you to, no matter if you're here or if you are North America or if you're in another spot. So people will sync the stream when they find it and we give the call. So my piece to you is, is... You can search on your own for it, or you can pay the 99 cents and then you can scroll down and we'll give you a pile of options where you might be able to find and locate games. So Tomoya Mori at the plate. And he's waiting on the first offering here from Matsumoto. It's a fastball that misses down and the count is 1-0. Mori 0 for 1 to 8. He has scored the only run so far for the Buffaloes. He walked, and he also stole a base as well in the fifth inning. Happened to be third base on the stolen base. And here comes the 1-0 offering as the right-hander kicks and delivers. It's a fastball that misses down. And the count now goes to 2-0 on Mori. So two balls and no strikes. And Shikawa is the runner at second. There's one gone here in the seventh. The Buffaloes are trailing three to one. This is a moving point in the ball game here. The Buffaloes, if they're going to get back into this one, I would have to think that they're going to have to do this. Our friend HDDS, TRSSD, I'm not sure what that is, but he says he's checking in from Boston. We're glad you can make it. Boston fans know their baseball. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Breaking ball swung on and grounded foul just past the bag at first base, and the count now goes to 2-1 and one on Mori. Coast to coast, listen in here. Some are on the East Coast, some are on the West Coast. Some are north of the border. Some are in, in Europe. We get the European listeners in the midweek. We call the games as they are listening from work. Depending on the night, the crowd changes a little bit. So two balls and one strike it is. And some night we get the big-time gambling crowd that comes in and wants to know who we think is going to win. So two balls and one strike to Mori, and he asks for time and steps out of the batter's box. Matsui steps out the back side of the rubber, and we're going to go through this whole routine again. This is the gamesmanship of baseball that I do miss. North America, the game has changed. There's people who run the game who have never played the game. And that makes it all the more of a challenge sometimes to 
I have to watch what's going on in Major League Baseball sometimes. Fastball swung on, grounded over to second, fielded neatly by the second baseman, Masaki Mamori. He throws to first. Mori, Tomoya Mori is gone, ground out four to three. It advances Nishikawa to third. And that's going to leave it all up to the first baseman, Yuma Tongu. Our friend Drew's box break says he's also tuning in from Boston, and Easy Growing says he's from New York. He's got to get a Buffalo win to get his money back. Our friend Jason says he's on the West Coast. He's close to Seattle. Looks like the pitcher Matt's may have broken a shoelace. He's got the Takuya Kai out on the mound for a visit. And they came out to check on him. So that is over here. The conference is over. Let's bring Yuma Tongu to the plate. Easy growing says he's subbed in here, and we appreciate you for that. Thanks for listening in. So Yuma Tongu here. Stepping the plate, he's 0 for 1 tonight. He's grounded to short his only time up. He's also walked. So he is here in a clutch situation. Matsumoto trying to seal the deal. Tongu batting from the right side. He is 1 for 6 on the season. And here's the first offering from the right-hander. It's a fastball that misses down, and the count is 1-0. and 0. One ball and no strikes. I have to say, I don't always listen into the announcers these days in baseball, unless I'm driving Major League Baseball. I was listening to a game the other day when the Reds were playing the Nationals. I was driving the vehicle, almost drove off the road when I heard, I think it was Jeff Brantley, the former pitcher, giving some insight on hitting. Couldn't believe it. He was talking about hitters' approaches at the plate. One ball and no strikes to Tongu. I think he'd probably be better served staying with the pitching side. There's a fastball swung on and missed. Count goes even to one and one. Jason said, yeah, he was sub since last summer. He's been around a bit. So one ball and one strength to Tongu. Had quite the crowd for the finals last year. A lot of people bounced in to listen. Finals between the Tigers and the Oryx Buffaloes, who we're listening to here. There's a fastball that misses down and in. The count goes to two and one. What up, guy? 2024 in the house. Appreciate you for stopping by. So two balls and one strike to Tongu. Runner at third, Nishikawa. Two gone here in the seventh. Crowd in places in Oryx or in Osaka are on their feet, trying to cheer their Buffaloes on. And Tongu has asked for time and stepped out of the batter's box, and we're going to do this whole routine over again. So two balls and one strike it is. Kogita on the hook here right now. He would be in line for the loss. There's a fastball that just misses down. Oh, it's going to run the count to three and one. So three balls and one strike to Yuma Tongu. Buffaloes have to try to get one back here. Being down two, having to face Fuji and Osuna in the last two innings is going to be a tall task. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. As the right-hander kicks and fires. Fastball swung on. Bat absolutely destroyed in the hands of Tongu. They flip it over to first, and that is going to retire Tongu. It's going to go down as a ground out 3-1. That bat shattered, not in half. It shattered into about three or four pieces. That will do it here for the first baseman of the Buffaloes. Well, they squander an opportunity, a leadoff double by Nishikawa. 
They left them stranded at third. There were no runs in the inning. There was a hit. There were no errors and one left aboard. We're now through seven complete. Your score is the Hawks three and the Buffaloes one. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back in just a bit with all the call right after this. Appreciate you guys for being here. We'll be back in just a few. Welcome back, everybody. It is going to be a pitching change as the Buffaloes are going to their bullpen. It is going to be a left-hander. It is going to be a number 57. This is going to be Nobo Yoshi Yamada. As he will be taking over here in inning number eight. So they will use a little bit different set of relievers when they're down runs as opposed to when they're up. So Nobo Yoshi Yamada in relief here, the lefty. And he is getting his tune-up tosses completed. As we are about ready to resume the action here in just a couple moments, just taking a look at the Buffalo's pitching staff. Looks like Hitomi Honda is still listed on in their bullpen. Curious to see this year how Honda will make out. He had a good year a couple of years ago last year. I don't, for some reason, I think he lost an edge. We weren't sure of the substitutions, but this is going to be how it is. It is going to be... Masaki Mamori is actually in the nine spot. So he is going to lead it off here. Takuya Kai on the double switch. He will be in the eight spot in the batting order. So Mamori to bat here in the eighth to get things going. He first pitches a fastball, take it for a call and strike, and the count is quickly 0 and 1. This is the first action Mamori has seen of the new year as Taisi Makihara has been manning second base. Takuya Kai, as we said, fits into the eight spot. There's a fastball swung on and fouled away. Count is now 0-2 to Mamori. Mamori. Mamori, in his own right, has some wheels. When he and Shudo are hitting or batting at the top of the batting order, poses a definite threat to opposing teams with their speed. Speed never slumps. Your batting might go into a slump, but speed never does. Here's the 0-2. Fastball swung on, grounded back to the pitcher. Fielded easily by the pitcher Yamada, who throws to first. Momori gone on a ground out 1-3 in the books for the first out of the inning. It's going to bring up the top of the order in Yukio Shudo. So Shudo, he's 1-3 for three tonight. He's got a single in three trips. Adding an even 100 to start the year. That single in the third inning was a bunt base hit down the third base line. Batting from the left side here against the left-handed throwing Yamada and the pitch on the way. Fastball misses outside and the count is quickly 1-0. So one ball and no strikes to Shudo. As we keep our eye on the scoreboard out of town, still nothing, nothing with the Giants and the Tigers. As the left-hander kicks and delivers, fastball misses down and away. Now two and zero to Shudo. Got to find a way to keep him off the base paths. 
It's now a 4-2 lead for the Swallows over the Dragons. That's in the bottom half of the sixth inning. 2-1, Carp have the lead in the bottom of the fifth against the Bay Stars. The game is going on in Yokohama. Here's the 2-0. Fastball taken for a called strike, and the count now goes to 2-1 on Shudo. We're just getting a quick peek to see what's happening there. It looks like that bottom half of the inning looks like they've got one on to the base stars. It's a fastball taken at the knees for called strike. The count is two and two. Got a runner on with two gone. Other scores in the Pacific League 3 3 in the top of the seventh between the Eagles and the Lions. Marines 2-0 over the Fighters. That is in the top of the fifth. Fastball swung on, chopped foul behind home plate. Count remains at 2-2 two two to Shudo. Marines are up 2-0 on the Fighters. That is in the top of the fifth inning. Roki Sazaki got the start tonight for the Marines. In that one there, he is still in the ballgame. Uhara has been pitching for the Fighters. Here comes the 2-2 to Shudo. Pitch on the way. Fastball misses down. Nice stop by the catcher, Tomoya Mori. That brings the count now to 3-2. and two. We're going to have to refresh our drink in the in-between here. As we are starting to get a little raspy as this game is going on. We're not in mid-season form with our voice. I can tell you that for sure. Three balls and two strikes to Shudo as the lefty Yamada now kicks and delivers. Fastball misses upstairs. That's going to be ball four. And you got to find a way to keep Shudo off the base pass. But unfortunately for Yamada, he has issued a free pass here. Shudo has a stolen base already in this game. That sure wasn't the fault of Mori or the starting pitcher, Tajima. Shudo was just able to get himself a great jump and his wheels can do the job. Friend Drew says, did I pick the base stars? Our friend Nick says he needs the Hawks and the Eagles for his parlay. Eagles game is a lot of suspense. Our friend living room is looking for more runs. He wants the Hollis commercials on the in-between. Oh, well, you ask and you shall receive. We'll be more than happy to do that for you. Here's the pitch. Fastball swung on, grounded past the first baseman in the right field. That's going to be trouble. Shoot around second. He's heading to third. Coming up with it is the right fielder who fires it in the play at the plate. It's in time, but Maury has dropped the ball and it squirts up the third baseline. And getting in safely to third is Kenta Imamiya. Looks like it's going to be a double for Imamiya. He's going to go to third on the throw to the plate. Shudo is going to score all the way from first base. That's what speed and base on balls do for you. And that has increased the lead to four to one here as the Hawks now are flapping their wings again here in the eighth inning. Oh boy, Yuma Tongu having a rough night at the office at first base. That was one of the tough plays no matter what. The throw to the plate was on the first base side. It was in time. Maury couldn't hang on to it. He had to reach back across to apply the tag. And I think he probably would have got Shudo had he been able to hang on. Well, that's going to bring Yuki Yanagita to the plate. And it's going to bring the infield in as we're going to try to cut down Imamiya at the plate if Yanagita puts the ball into the infield. And the first pitch is a fastball swung on and fouled away, and the count is 0-1 to Yanagita. So no balls and one strike. Jason says he needs the bees to win. Well, it's going to be a lot harder now here in these next two innings. If they're facing Fuji and Osuna, it could be good night. The party is over for the Buffaloes. Here comes the 0-1. Fastball misses inside, and the count goes even to 1-1 one one on Yanagita. 
we were looking earlier tonight, we were talking about around the NPB, Yoshinubu Yamamoto had a bounce back night tonight. Five innings in his start. Allowed two hits and struck out five against the Cardinals. What's up, guys, says, is the runner at third base? Yep, that would be Emma Mia right now. Emma Mia at third with one gone. Infield is in. One ball and one strike to Yanagita. And here comes the pitch. Fastball comes inside, almost hits Yanagita. Count goes now to two and one. The big popper, Hotaka Yamakawa, waits his turn on deck. Yeah, this is a, definitely a spot here that the Buffaloes find themselves in a little bit of trouble. Here's the 2-1. As the lefty delivers, fastball swung on. This ball is going to be lined to third, cut by Mune. He's going to step on the bag at third. That's going to be a double play. They got a little bit of luck here, so that's going to go in the books. As a double play to five, and that will do it here in the inning for the Hawks. So one run in the inning on the benefit of only one hit. No errors and nobody left the board. Your score as we move to the bottom of the eighth, it is Fukuoka 4, Oryx 1. And tight, everybody will be back here in just a few. Appreciate you guys for being here tonight. We'll be back in just a couple of moments with all the action after this. Got ourselves a 4-1 ball game. We'll be back in just a few. Another pitching change on the docket here. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everybody. It's going to be the bottom third of the batting order to come to bat for the Buffaloes. Our friend What's Up Guy says they just choke at third base. It was a line drive double play. It was the batter, Yanagita, hit one right on the screws, right to the third baseman, Yuma Mune, who caught it and stepped on the bag. Yuma was well off the base, had no chance at getting back. So the score is 4-1 to one here as we are in the bottom of the eighth inning. The first pitch to Yuma Mune is a breaking ball that misses for ball one. So 4-1 is the score line. As Mune bats here. And the pitch from Fuji on the way as a fastball swung on and fouled away. And the count goes even at 1-1. One one. Our friend What's Up Guy asked the question. We usually update our scoring ticker at the end of each half inning. Sometimes it gets a little crazy here with all the action that goes on. So it was a 3-1 game when... Emma Mia hit the double to knock home Shudo in that top part of the inning. We do have the pitching change. It is Fuji as we anticipated on for the eighth inning here as he is facing Yuma Mune and that's a fastball swung on and fouled away and the count goes to one and two. Koya Fuji in his third season with the Hawks. He had missed a year as he was an independent ball. He was originally with the Hiroshima Carp. 
but he is on in relief here tonight for the Hawks. And we would expect Roberto Osuna to come for the ninth. There is a breaking ball that misses outside, and the count goes even to 2-2 two two on Mune. Mune is officially 0 for 1 tonight. He flew to left. He had a sacrifice fly to the right fielder his last time up. He is 2 for 8 on the season with no homers and a couple of RBIs. And here comes the offering. As there is a fastball that just misses, and the count now goes to 3 and 2. So three balls and two strikes to Mune. Puji last year began the season as a starter. And then he ended up with an oblique injury, missed quite a bit of time, came back as a reliever, and that's where he has found himself this year back in the bullpen. Here's the 3-2. Fastball swung on. It's grounded foul just over on the first baseline, fielded by the first base coach. Count's going to remain at 3-2. and two. After this happening, we're going to try to get ourselves a, another drink. I was trying my darndest to get through all of the Japanese players in the Major League Baseball that played today. As the 3-2 pitch is coming to Mune, there were three offensive players that saw action in the MLB. 3-2 on the way, fastball misses upstairs. And Mune gets himself a leadoff walk here in the eighth inning. That's going to bring up Yataro Sugimoto. Masataki Yoshida went one for five for the Red Sox today. He also drove in a run at a losing cause against the Mariners. Say Suzuki was 0 for 4 today as they got blown out by the Texas Rangers. He struck out a pair of times. And Shohei Otane went one for five for the Dodgers tonight. As we have Sugimoto standing in. Runner at first is Mune. Sugimoto 0 for 2 tonight, and he takes a breaking ball that drops in for a called strike. He can't believe it. And he does a 180, walks a row to the batter's box. A friend, what's up, guy, says Shohei choked and lost the game for him. I didn't see that. I'm sure Shohei Otani will have other opportunities to Make amends. So here comes the 0-1 pitch as the right-hander delivers. Fastball misses down, and the count goes even to 1-1. One and one. one ball and one strike. Waiting on deck is Kataro Kirbyashi, and then it'll be the top of the order. And I wouldn't bat an eye to see a couple of pinch hitters maybe come in here. I would think that probably Marwin Gonzalez will be grabbing a bat. Wouldn't be surprised if either Fakuda comes in. I'm not sure where Kai Nakagawa is yet. We haven't seen him yet in this series if he's nursing an injury. Breaking ball misses up and in, and the count now goes to 2-1 and one on Sugimoto. Jason says his coach knows that catcher Red Sox brought in. Either Reese McGuire or Connor Wong, I would think. Here comes the 2-1 pitch as the right-hander Fuji works to the set. Checks the runner at first. Here's the pitch. Fastball swung on. This ball is lined into right center field, and this ball is going to get down. It's going to get up the gap all the way to the wall. Rounding second, heading to third is Mune. Mune is rounding third and heading home. Sugimoto is going to cruise into second with a double, and Mune has now scored a run to make the score line 4-2. So the Buffaloes have some life. A double for Sugimoto. That's his first RBI of the 2024 campaign. Mune comes across. And we have a 4-2 to ball game here with nobody out and a runner on second in the eighth inning. It's going to bring up the shortstop, Kataro Kirbyashi. So don't go away yet, everybody. We might have ourselves some more action on our hands here. We've got ourselves one swing of the bat can tie the game up. Unbelievable. 
So the right-hander ready to go again as Fuji works to the set. He checks the runner over at second, which is Sugimoto. Here's the pitch to Kirbyashi. It's a fastball, misses up. The count is 1-0. Oh. That last pitch was at 96 miles an hour. This is not the best that we have seen of Fuji. 12 pitches in this one here tonight. Seven balls and five strikes. That is definitely not going to get it done. And he pitches a breaking ball. I'll take it for a called strike, and the count is one and one. Jason says Reese McGuire is the one he's talking about. McGuire originally, I believe, a first-round pick of the Pirates. Bounced around quite a bit, was with the Blue Jays. I think he was with the White Sox. Maybe he's found a home with the Red Sox. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. Fastball swung on, lifted foul down the right field line. Count now goes to 1-2 and two on Kirbyashi. Kirbyashi is 0-for-1 tonight. He has walked and popped a second. He has yet to get a hit in the 2024 campaign. He is 0-for-8. Unlike the two games on the night before, this one here is kind of dragging a little bit now. Here comes the one-two pitch. As the right-hander kicks and delivers, there's a breaking ball. Take it for a called strike. Strike three. That was a really late call by the home plate umpire. And Kirby Ashi's going to walk back to the dog. He doesn't say anything, but I got to tell you, that home plate umpire, it was like he paused and waited. It was actually a split-finger pitch. It was up in the zone. Takuya Kai does a great job. Being able to frame that pitch, Kirbyashi gone for the first out of the inning, but boy, oh boy. Not sure about that one. It's supposed to be Rio Oda coming to the plate. And we'll see what we have here. This looks like it is Nishino pinch hitting. That's exactly who it is. Masahiro Nishino stepping up to the plate. He's one for four on the season. So he will replace Oda here. That's Fuji ready to go again. And the first offering from the right-hander as he holds set and delivers. Fastball catches the outside corner for a called strike, and the count is 0-1. I'm not sure if Nishino knows what a strike is or what isn't a strike. But it does look like we may have a pinch hitter. Moving into the on-deck circle, looks like Tio Kata coming to swing the bat there. Here comes the 0-1 offering from Fuji. Pitch on the way. Fastball swung on and missed. Count now goes to 0-2 on Nishino. Friend Jason sa says 14th overall. He was from Covington. And McGuire had some strange issues that went on in the Blue Jays organization a few years ago. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. As the right-hander holds to the set, now delivers. Fastball just misses outside. The count goes to 1-2 and two on Nishino. Supposed to be Ryoto Watanabe on deck, but with Okuda or with Oti Okada moving in there. Interesting to see what they run out into center field in the next half inning. Here comes the one-two pitch. Right hander holds, checks the runner at second, now delivers. Fastball swung on and fouled away. Count remains at one and two to Nishino. Rocco says, what's the score? Scores across the bottom. We don't update it until the end of the half innings. So it's 4-2 currently right now for the Hawks. They've got a runner at second base. That's Sugimoto. And there's currently one down here in the inning. 
And one ball and two strikes to Nishino, the pinch hitter, who is in for Oda. And here comes the pitch as Fuji holds set. He kicks and delivers. There's a breaking ball swung on. It is lifted foul. It's going to reach the seats behind the third base dugout. Count remains at one and two. So one ball and two strikes it is. Fuji is taking forever here. He's really slowed the game down. I remember last year when the Buffaloes and the Tigers played an exhibition game, just as they did this year prior to the start of the season, and the bullpen for the Tigers could absolutely put you to sleep. They were so slow. I had the stopwatch out, and they were sometimes 30 seconds between pitches or more. Well, Fuji is starting to approach that range. There's a fastball that just misses outside. Count goes to two and two. Umpire not sure if he's going to give calls or not. That pitch looked pretty darn good, but there was some arm side run that probably took it off the plate. 21 pitches already in the inning here for the right-hander. Fuji ready to go again. He gets the sign from his catcher, Takuya Kai. Works himself to the set position. Checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Take it for a called third strike. Oh, back-to-back -back strikeouts looking here for the Buffaloes. Oh, if there's a time to say something to the home plate umpire, this would probably be the time to say it. Both of the hitters can't believe Kirby Ashi and now Nishino, that pitch looked inside. Probably telling him on the way back to the dugout, you do know we're the home team. Certainly no home calls here for the Buffaloes tonight. That's going to bring up Tio Kata to the plate. Well, Okada steps in. He got the start on opening night. 36-year-old. Went 0 for 4 in the opener, looking for his first hit of the campaign. And here comes the first pitch of the ball game, or first pitch to him from Fuji. Breaking ball, misses, counts 1 and 0. That pitch looked a whole lot better than the last pitch, and that pitch wasn't ruled as a strike. Fairness to the umpires, we are on an offset angle, but boy, oh boy. Trying to figure out the difference between that pitch and the one to Kirbyashi. As Kirbyashi was rung up. So here comes the 1-0 offering as Fuji gets his sign. Two gone here in the eighth inning. One ball and no strikes to Okada. Fuji checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch. There's a fastball swung on and missed, and the count goes even to one and one. So one ball and one strike. Appreciate everybody for hanging in here with us tonight. As we mentioned, we'll be on the airwaves later in the week. So hopefully you guys can make it in with us for all the action. We'll post our schedule in the next couple of days, so I'll give you an idea of what we are all about. There's a fastball ticket for a called strike. Oh, Okada can't believe it. He raises his hand, he walks away, and you have to feel for the Buffaloes hitters here. I'm not really partial either way for the Buffaloes or the Hawks, but he's absolutely disgusted. That last pitch, we're not even, I don't, we haven't even seen it on the replay yet. I, I'm sure that the Pacific League would be embarrassed to show it on the replay. It was so bad. That being said, we've got two balls and two strikes here. Okada rests his bat on the shoulder, waiting here on the offering from the right-hander Fuji. As he works himself set, checks the runner Sugimoto over at second. Here we go again. Pitch on the way. Fastball down and away. Uh, Kata would have been called out on that pitch. I'm sure we would have had a full-on brawl on our hands. Unbelievable.
So two balls and two strikes. Kind of here. Waiting on the offering here from the right-hander Fuji, who works himself to the set. And now the pitch. Fastball swung on and fouled away right at the foot of the catcher, Kai. Oh, Kata was lucky. He's still got second life. Look at that last pitch there by Fuji. A lot of downward taper on that when the ball was fouled off and it actually went through the legs of the catcher, Kai. So we'll try this all over again. Here we go. The crowd is making themselves heard here. Three balls and two strikes to Okada. Two gone here in the eighth. They don't have a lot of life left, and one would think Osuna would be bringing the ninth inning for the Hawks. Here's the 2-2. Luigi checks the runner, now delivers. Breaking ball, misses up and in. And Okada, that's ball four. I don't know what Okada's doing. Is he going to take his base or what? I got to do a double check. It they've got a three and two here. I've got that as ball four, unless something has gone awry. Well, maybe it is three and two, but I got to go take a look back at the amount of pitches and maybe run this one back. Who knows? Maybe the umpires lost the count too. I guess maybe we did it. That's absolutely strange. Well, let's see what happens here. Here comes the 3 2 offering, apparently, to Okada. And that pitch is going to be ball four. So maybe we were a pitch behind. Ball four to Okada. He gets aboard with a walk. That's going to put runners at first and second. It's going to bring Ryoma Nishikawa to the plate. And time is called as Takuya Kai is making his way to the mound. And I think we're going to have a visit from the pitching coach as well. We're going to have a full conference of Hawks at the mound here. Here comes the pitching coach for Fukuoka. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner for Okada over at first base as his night will be over. I got to do a quick count here to see if somebody lost the count here. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was somebody else. Seven. Oh, maybe it was me losing the count somewhere or putting a, some, a spot in where it shouldn't have been. Because he is at 29 pitches is Fuji. That's a lot of pitches so far in this half inning. I didn't get the number of the runner. I would assume that might be Fakuda coming in to run. Tsunami says, how many batters are left in this inning? Well, not sure about how many batters are left. There's two gone here. Runner at second is Sugimoto. Runner at first is Tio Kata. And Ryoma Nishikawa stepping to the plate. He's two for three tonight. He's got a single and a double in three trips. He's raised his season average up to 300 as he's three for 10. He's got a chance to play some hero here. He has the go-ahead run at the plate. First pitch fastball misses down and away, and the count is 1-0. and oh. Looming on deck is the designated hitter, Leandro Cedeno. One swing of the bat here could put the Buffaloes out in front. And Fuji has fallen behind again in the count. Pitch number 31 from the right-hander, ready to come. As he works himself to the set. Checks the runner at second. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball drops in for a called strike, and the count goes even to one and one. So one ball and one strike it is. Blows behind by you here in the eighth. They're running out of time to score some runs. Crowd is cheering on their beloved Buffaloes. And here comes the 1-1 one, one offering. Fastball. It gets away from the catcher all the way to the backstop. Oh, that's trouble. That's going to advance the runners up into first and second. He had spiked the ball, so uh, the pinch runner for Okada is now at second. 
Sugimoto is the runner at third. Oh boy, a base hit here could score the runner from second base. As you got two runners in scoring position. Well, they're not making it themselves easy here, the Hawks. A lot of late inning drama, maybe more so than we would have anticipated in this one. So two balls and one strike it is here to the batter in Ishikawa. Runners are at second and third. A tying run at second base, the go-ahead run at the plate. Now they just need a single to the Buffaloes. Crowd is cheering their heroes on. They are shallow in the outfield. Got to be able to throw the runner out at the plate. Here's the 2-1. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball. Taken for a called strike. And now Nishikawa is not happy with the home plate umpire. Home plate umpire has had his disgust tonight. We'll look at the replay on that one. Oh, boy, that pitch looked like it was low. Takuya Kai really had to get underneath it to win that strike. So two balls and two strikes to Nishikawa. So that meant that Kirby Ashi, Okada, and Nishikawa not happy with the home plate umpire in this half inning. It's a bit of a thankless job being an umpire at times, but... All you look for is consistency. If guys are bouncing the ball up to the plate and you're calling it a strike, and you're doing it all the time, at least you can understand that it's consistent. Not sure that consistency would be what I would use tonight. There's a fastball that misses down and away. It's going to be three and two to Nishikawa. They do have an open base, but it is Leandro Cedeno who waits his turn on deck. Three balls and two strikes to Nishikawa. Two gone here in the eighth. Runner at second. And runner at third for the Buffaloes. And the pinch runner who is in now for Okada it is Shuhei Fukuda. We expect that he would probably go into the outfield into center field. So here comes the 3-2 pitch. Pitch on the way. Fastball swung on, and it is grounded to the left side, fielded by the third baseman, Curry Hara. The throw to first in time gets Nishikawa by a step, and that is going to do it. Nice play by the third baseman. It's going to go in the books as a ground out 5-3. to three. They almost had their chance. That ball just about got through the hole, and Fuji survives. That is going to retire Nishikawa for the third out of the inning. One run in the inning on the benefit of only one hit. There were no errors, and there were two runners left the board. Now through eight complete, your score is the Hawks four and the Buffaloes two. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back with the call in just a few. Appreciate you guys for being here. I'll be right back in just a bit. Hello, this is Eric Fox, formerly of the Oakland A's and Texas Rangers baseball teams. If you want to learn about Japanese baseball, see Coach Fred, Last Raps Baseball. If you want baseball instruction, see Coach Fred. If you want to learn about golf, do not go to Coach Fred. Fred, what kind of club is this? At Last Draft's Baseball, we know baseball. to have an ace in the hole a little secret that nobody knows life is a gamble a game we all play but you've got to save something for a rainy day you've got to learn to play your cards right if you expect to win in life don't put it all on the line for just one roll. You've got to have an ace in the hole. 
<laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It is going to be yet another pitching change. Number 96 entering the ball game for the Buffaloes. We've got this as Taito Takashima. Looks like there's a couple of other changes as well as it is going to be the second baseman, Nishino, and the center fielder, Fukuda, are going to be making the other changes. And the first pitch delivered to Yamakawa, fastball swung on and grounded foul. The count is 0-1. So Taito Takashima, pitcher number five here used tonight by the Buffaloes. So no balls and one strike. Here comes the pitch. Fastball swung on. This ball is lifted into a shallow right field. Coming in, hurrying, and he can't get it on the hop, and it ends up getting by him. Rounding first and heading to second is Yamakawa. He's rounding second and heading to third, and the big fella is going to get himself a three-base either hit or an error. We're going to have to wait and see. But Sugimoto played that one, made a meal out of that one. And so they're going to have a runner at third, and Yamakawa is going to run off the bases for a pinch runner here in the top of the ninth inning. We're going to see how the scorer is going to rule that one. It's definitely a least a single. The question is, is, is there a two-base error applied to that? I'm not so sure. Not the best decision-making by Yataro Sugimoto, that is for certain. And they do have an error already on the Buffaloes here tonight. Just can't see where exactly that had taken place. But we'll have to get that for you caught up in a bit. So the first pitch is a fastball delivered to Kensky Kondo. He takes that one for a called strike, and the count is 0-1. So Yamakawa out of the game. It is Kawase who is in to run for him. Pitches a fastball taken for a ball, and the count now goes to one and one on Kondo. We are losing our voice quickly. And this one here, unfortunately, hang in with us, everybody. We're trying the best we can to keep our voice in shape. Here's the pitch. Fastball that just misses outside. The count goes to two and one. Other than pitchers hitting batters in the heads, where we have witnessed ejections, that's an automatic ejection in the NPB, we have not seen a manager ejected in the games that we have done. A friend Tunami says radio can be straining. Yeah, tonight it can be. Gonna keep the orange juice handy. There's a fastball that misses outside. It's now three and one to Condo. I almost think they should have a dedicated camera on Nakajima, the Buffalo's manager. He's got some of the more interesting animated facial expressions. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. Fastball taken for a called strike. The count now goes to 3-2. and two. So three balls and two strikes to Kondo. Tough night at the office for the Buffaloes. Tough night at the office in the voice department for us. Good thing we're not calling a double header. So here comes the 3-2 pitch. As he kicks and delivers, fastball swung on, taps softly over to second. The runner at third holds. Nishino throws to first. It's going to be a ground out 4-3. to three. That is going to retire Kondo for the first out of the inning. Trying to see if the Hawks or where the if they've ruled that as a hit here for Yamakawa. And I, I have a feeling they have. So I think they gave Yamakawa a triple on that one. We'll have to check the box score later on, but 
I do believe that's what they have ruled. That's exactly what it is. A triple for Yamakawa. I wonder what the last time he's hit a triple. First pitch is a fastball swung on and fouled away, and the count is quickly 0-1 to Ryoya Kurihara. Kurihara is 1-3 for three tonight. He's got a double in three trips. He's also driven in a run. Statistically speaking, looking up Yamakawa, the last time and the only other time he had a triple in his career, 2018, he did it for the Saitama Cebu Lions. There's the 0-1. Fastball misses inside, and the count goes to 1-1. One and one. So one ball and one strike it is. I didn't realize that Yamakawa did play 17 games for the Lions last year before he was jettisoned. Fastball swung on, lifted into right left center field, racing over is Fakuda. He makes the catch. Tagging at third is Kwase. He's coming home. The throw is not in time. It's going to go as a sacrifice fly to eight. Driving in the run is Kurihara. Scoring is Kawase, and it's going to restore the lead. It is now a 5-2 lead here for the Hawks in the ninth inning. Clears the bases. It's slated to bring up Rico Ogata. But we'll wait and see if Ogata is indeed coming to bat here. It was the spot in the batting order that was once occupied by Adam Walker. We'll just have to wait and see what the decision is here. Once the batter steps into the box, here comes the first offering, and the pitch is a fastball swung on it, missed. And it is Ogata. Ogata did make his debut earlier in the series. Twenty-five year old, left-handed hitting now DH, zero for one this season. And there's the pitch. It's a fastball swung on and missed, and the count now goes to zero and two. Jason asked the question there, are you going to be doing another game tomorrow if they're having one? Nope, no game tomorrow. Monday's the day off. We mentioned Tuesday, Wednesday are going to be out of town, so we'll be calling the Thursday night game. I forget who the Lions are playing, but it's going to be 9 o'clock Pacific. Fastball, take it for a call. Third strike, Ogata down. He's gone for out number three, and that is going to do it here in the ninth inning. Bunt. The Buffaloes have gifted the Hawks another run. One run in the inning, one hit. No errors, nobody left the board. The score as we move to the bottom of the ninth. It is the Hawks 5 and the Buffaloes 2. Stick around, everybody. We'll be back in just a few. Appreciate you guys for being with us. By demand, here is our friend Matt. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Namaste. Hey, I hope you guys have been enjoying the game. My name is Hollis. I've got a YouTube channel called Another Hollis Build. Um, I love baseball cards. I open up brand new product for you guys. I open up old stuff. I do breaks. I do auctions. All kinds of stuff concerning baseball. I'm Friars Faithful, Padres to the end. I also love Garbage Pail Kids and my animals. I have a ton of animals. It's like a mini petting zoo here around my house. I also love my city. San Diego, baby. I'll take you all around the city and show you what's up. Um, if you guys dig stuff like that, cruise on over and check it out. It's another Hollis build. If you dig it, subscribe. I, I'd really appreciate to have more follow me along on the journey. Hey, either way, you guys have a wonderful day or a beautiful, beautiful evening. No matter which one it is, make sure that you make it great, my friends. Big up, Last Raps Baseball. Yeah, Freddy, let's go. One love and peace. Yeah, man. Welcome back, everybody. As expected, we're going to have Roberto Osuna coming on to pitch the ninth inning. He'll be facing the heart of the batting order. It'll be Leandro Cedeno, Tomoya Mori, and Yuma Tongu. So three, four, and five to face the star closer for the Fukuoka Ball Club. 
So Osuna on in relief. Already appeared in one game this year. I would have been in the season opener, and he made very quick work of the Buffaloes. Are some changes defensively. As they have a new first baseman and a new third baseman do the Hawks, we'll have to try to get those changes for you as they appear on our updates. We'll see what they have to have here. Looks like Curry Hara has moved over to first base and Kawase is the third baseman. So Curry Hara has just gone across the infield. And Kawase, who came in for Yamakawa, is moved over to third. Here's the first pitch from Osuna. Fastball misses outside, and it's 1-0 to Sedanio. Sedanio 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out twice and has flown to center field. He's one of the players in the lineup I think could turn a ball around on Osuna, and he swings at the pitch, and it's a base hit into center field. So Daniel is aboard with a single. It's going to bring up the catcher, Tomoya Mori. So right now they're going to leave Sedanio in the game to run. I would think Marwin Gonzalez would be a candidate for a pinch hitter here eventually. But I would circle Kataro Kirbyashi down at the bottom of the order for that spot. So runner at first. And that brings Maury to the plate. Maury is 0 for 2 tonight. He has scored a run. And he swings at the first pitch and fouls it off right into the mask of the catcher. And the count is quickly 0 and 1. Takuya Kai tipped that one right in the mask. So no balls and one strike to Maury. Batting here from the left side against the right-handed throwing Roberto Osuna. And the pitch is a fastball that misses inside, and the count now goes to one and one. So one ball and one strike to Mori. Right-hander Osuna leans in. He gets the sign from his catcher, Kai. Here comes the one-one pitch. Fastball swung on and grounded foul over on the first base side. Count remains at one and two. So one ball and two strikes it is. I do want to thank everybody coming in to listen tonight. Those of you who struck around late. It was a very tight game through the first five, and the game started to Spread apart when the bullpens came in. Fastball swung on and missed, and Mori goes into the books for the first out of the inning. One gone, and that brings up the first baseman, Yuma Tongu. Not sure what that pitch was. Looked like it could have been a changeup. Almost like a split finger pitch from Osuna. But didn't really do any splitting. So this brings Tago to the plate, who is 0 for 2 tonight. He has walked and he's grounded out twice. 1 for 7 to start the campaign. And here comes the first pitch from Osuna. Fastball swung on, grounded to third, fielded by Kawase over to second for one, back to first. And that is going to be an inning ending double play of the 5 4 3 variety. Well, there was no runs in the inning, it was a hit. There was no errors and nobody left the board. Your final score, the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks 5 and the Oryx Buffaloes 2. Stick around with us, everybody. We'll be back in a few minutes to wrap this one up, and we'll give you all the out-of-town scores. Appreciate you all for being here with us. Hang tight. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back, everybody. We'll give you the wrap-up in this one here. The scoring started in the top of the fifth inning when Adam Walker hit a one-out shot to straightaway center field to open up the scoring for the Hawks as they grabbed a one nothing lead in the top of the fifth. Buffaloes immediately responded in the their half of the fifth. A leadoff walk to Tomoya Mori. A walk to Yumatongu, and then Mori actually stole third. Well, they tried to back pick him at second base. He took off for third, and that put runners on the corners. And then Yuma Mune stepped up and hit a sacrifice fly to right field to drive home Mori, and that made the score line one to one. The Hawks added to their lead in the seventh inning, or added added to their score line in the seventh inning. They scored two runs. It was a with one out. Kensky Kondo singled, then Rioya Kurihara doubled home Kondo, and then up stepped. Adam Walker, and he singled home Kurihara with his second RBI of the game. And that would increase the score line to 3-1. to one. In the top of the eighth inning, the Hawks added another run. With one out, it was a walk to Shudo. And then a double by Imamiya scored Shudo all the way from first to increase the score line to 4-1. to one. In the bottom of the eighth inning, the Buffaloes got one back. Mune led off of the walk. And then Sugimoto doubled him home. To make the score four to two, but the Hawks iced it in the ninth inning. It was an unbelievable triple off the bat of Hotaka Yamakawa. And then the pinch runner Kawase was brought home on a sacrifice fly by Kuriara. And that made the score line five two, and that was where it ended. Once again, your final score five to two for the Hawks. Just a quick look at the out of town scoreboard before we sign off for the night. Scores from around the NPB in the top of the 10th inning. It is 3-3 between the Eagles and the Lions. In the top of the 7th inning, the Marines are clinging to a 2-1 lead against the Fighters. Again, this one here is a 5-2 final. Over in the Central League, top of the 8th inning, Tigers and Giants locked at 0. And the Swallows have a 5-2 lead over the Dragons. That's in the top of the ninth. Top of the eighth inning, it is a 2-1 lead for the Carp over the Bay Stars. And that is your round from around the NPB. Once again, everybody, we appreciate you for being here. We also thank Tanami for sending $2 to the channel. We thank you for doing that and your support and giving us the super chat. TYN, Tanami, Jason, our friend Jesse Harway, also Living Room. Not to mention everybody else who stopped in here tonight. Rocco, Nick, and everybody else who I'm going to miss. What's up, guy? And the folks like Titus, God is great, HDD, S, TRSDD, all the rest of the folks that popped in here tonight. We appreciate you guys for being here. We are going to be doing the game on Wednesday. It'll be the Saitama Cebu Lions. When you get a chance, come on by and listen in. It'll be the... Wednesday, North American time, Thursday, the Japanese time. That will be at 9 o'clock Pacific or midnight Eastern. It'll be the Oryx Buffaloes and the Saitama Cebu Lions. That'll be our next one. And then on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it is looking like we will probably stay with the Buffaloes for three more games as they're going to take on the Chivalote Marines. The Zozo Marines Stadium, at least two of those games will be on the call for, if not all three. Once again, everybody, we appreciate you guys for being with us. Thanks again for your support. And we look forward to seeing you in the coming days. Take care, everybody. Hope you all have a great night and we'll see you again soon.